type of triple option. Let's take a look at the Colonials offense first, and we'll start along that offensive line who really looked good, and we talked about it with uh, Coach Bernard Clark Jr. during uh, the last segment, the fact that uh, that offensive line never really looked overwhelmed from left to right with the speed or the strength of the Buffalo defense. You're right, right. and Coach Clark, you know, hit it right on the head with, you know, making sure taking that right step first, being in the right position, knowing your assignments and believing in it and, and playing through the whistle. And you saw that. They, they weren't overpowered. They weren't outmatched. They were able to hold their own. And you see that statistically at the end of the game, what they were able to do against a very stout Buffalo defense last week. I expect the same thing this week. And the good thing is, is that, yeah, it was a little bit of a lopsided game towards the end. And then the backups were able to get that experience as well. And I know that's one thing that Coach Holder and Coach Clark pride themselves on. They want depth and experience along this offensive line this season. Well, it's important not only for those guys to get experience early in the season, number one, but number two, to get that kind of experience against an FBS opponent, whether it's Buffalo's first or second team. Absolutely. And they were really, you know, going. I, uh, they kept a lot of Buffalo, kept a lot of players in their, their defense because while Robert Morris is getting ready for the season, Buffalo this week was getting ready for Penn State. Let's talk about some of the specialists uh, for the Colonials, the guys that carry the ball. George Martin, the quarterback, a week ago, a solid football game, very efficient. Yeah, he was 7 for 9 for the game. Those two passes that he attempted in the second half were just sacks. Uh, but it looked a little bit vanilla, but we saw a glimpse of why he was able to break away from Lewis in camp, you know, rolling to his right and throwing a a bullet to the corner pattern to uh, Madison, who made an unbelievable catch. Started off a little slow, but made up for it with some big catches in the game. Talking about Madison, he's one of the three receivers that get to start in today's football game. Vecchio, the Wiley veteran on the other side, and Deontay White, who had a big catch last week as well. Yeah, Deontay White, we saw a lot of different wide receivers throughout the game. A lot of them, uh, a couple of them got some targets. I expect them to really try to focus in on who is going to be the key uh target this week, uh, especially with Matt Gonzalez not able to go as we saw him dressed in sweats on the sideline. Yeah, that means Steve Petrick will get the start at tight end. Now let's talk about the running backs where Terrence Stevens was bottled up a week ago, just 1.7 yards per carry, but a big breakout game for Elijah Jackson. Yeah, if I'm Buffalo's defensive coordinator, I'm looking at two players I'm looking to try to stop, and that's first Matt Gonzalez because he could break you down at either split them out wide as a tight end or from his natural position, or they like to move him around quite a bit. They did a very good Buffalo last week and I think that they were also very concerned about Stevens with his size six foot 200 pounds he showed that power and speed last year and I think they bottled him up very very well but Jackson came in and is able to relieve him and get a bulk of the carries in the second half and was able to do some damage. Let's talk about the RMU defense now and the cornerbacks. Uh, they had a rough time of it at, at points last week, especially considering Havon Price had a couple of breakdowns that led to touchdowns by Buffalo tight ends. Yeah, a lot of miscommunications when they were doing the wheel pattern. So someone goes into the flat and then that same person goes turns it up right down the sideline, traditional wheel pattern, and they had a lot of miscommunications and led to a lot of easy big plays and ultimately touchdowns for Buffalo, and I'm sure they cleaned that up. But one thing that concerned me last week was the mental mistakes, the defensive offside. So I expect a lot cleaner performance from this defense today, hopefully mistake-free. One thing that Coach Clark talked about in the uh, last segment of the pregame show was the fact that he likes the speed of Price, Harville, Gray, and Jacob White at the cornerbacks and safeties because this Buffalo or this uh, Kentucky State team has the opportunity to really get out and run. Yeah, I was really impressed by Gray and, and Jacob White on how aggressive they were. Once they saw that Buffalo was committing to the run, they came up like a that linebacker level and throwing their nose in there right away. Very, very impressed by them. Uh, especially Jacob White making his first start as a true freshman. And, of course, Mason Gray, the transfer from yep. Albany, had a big game, led the Colonials in tackles, upwards of eight tackles a week ago. And, really, we were calling his name play after play. Yeah, and Coach Clark said it. He is a leader out there. He is the quarterback of the defense and making sure that everybody's in the right position. I expect him to continue growing and being a more vocal leader, both on the field and on the sideline as well. Really looking to see how this defense turned the page after that performance last week with a lot of mental mistake breakdowns. Linebackers, Wanick continues to get the nod at middle linebacker as he and Devin Charles continue to battle for uh, the top spot at that spot. Yeah, and it's like 1A, 1B. I think we both agree with that. I mean, Wanick is a tough between-the-tackles guy that can just, you know, soak up anything that comes his way, and Charles is just so incredibly athletic out there, so fast. And sometimes that speed of middle linebacker can hurt you because you over-pursue in a cutback, but, you know, 
Coach Clark says, you know, again, another outstanding leader, and I expect both of them to get equal playing time today. Last season we saw flashes from Anello Bazzacco, but last week Buzz was really making his presence known. Buzz, and that's what he was all along the field. He was buzzing all over the place. And when you have someone that's that incredibly athletic and they were able to stretch him, we talk about T.J. Neal all the time, how athletic he was and all the positions he plays, and they are able to put him out on the slot back. They were doing that with Buzz a lot as well, leveraging his athletic ability and his size. 6'1", um, 190 as a true sophomore and was able to use that size to really disrupt the slot players out there and uh, boy he had an outstanding first game touched on the athleticism of tj neal he looked good a week ago but brady hour is starting to make his way back into the rotation at linebacker. yeah we started to learn about brady last year as, as he sort of by force had to be thrown into the lineups uh, due to injuries and just really trying to find the pieces last year he's coming into his own uh, boy, just a name that not only that we call on special teams, but also in certain packages that the defense will throw out there. You'll see when you come to the games that defense almost subs more than offense because of the packages that they'll put out there. They'll just have a name package, and you'll see three or four guys that automatically run in because it's now their time to shine because this is the defense that's just made for them. Talked about the high motor along that defensive front and Jared Harris, and he gets the start at defensive end. Really impressed by Jared last week. Um, just a really a non-name colonial that just appeared and boy did he just play with the motor um listed at 6'3 252 and vastly outsized by the size of the tackles of buffalo you know they were both 6'7 well over 300 pounds but he disrupted everything he could they they made some adjustments along the d-line were fighting across the face instead of taking the easy route of going underneath the blocks and they did a great job tyler lamick at the other defensive end spot uh, out for the season with an ankle injury chris stanford also went down with an ankle injury but he likely will step forward and get the start on that other defensive end yeah tyler i thought did a great job transitioning from his traditional outside linebacker position and putting his hand in the dirt, really using his strength and his speed to disrupt everybody. And it was unfortunate, just a play where someone from behind rolled up on his ankle and it was just a nasty replay. Talked to him after the game. He said he felt and heard three pops and it was confirmed, you know, had surgery and he's out for the season. Three guys rotating on the inside of that defensive line, Supi, Meili, Ezra Tupuola, and Izon Pulley, and all three of them played well a week ago. Yeah, Supi had a couple of mental breakdowns where he had some offside, especially right over the center, but you, Coach Clark talked about that, how intense he is, and hopefully he can just turn that back a little bit, and once that ball snaps, just ranch it up to from maybe a 6 to an 11. Now, one thing we don't know a whole lot about are a lot of these Kentucky State players because, quite frankly, their roster wasn't set until yesterday, but Jalen Myers, their quarterback, he seems to be a dangerous weapon. I watched some film on him in Coach Clark's office before the game. Uh, he can roll out. He can run with the football, and he has an arm. Yeah, he has an arm. Transfer from Garden Webb. He looked like he was an outstanding athlete. We're watching him warm up. He can sling the ball around. He's big. He's listed at, you know, six foot three, two 200 pounds. I mean, that's a really big individual that could be carrying the ball quite a bit today. Let's talk about Cleary's keys to the game before we get to kickoff. So I really think that I want to see Robert Moore today flex their muscles in all three phases. Last week they had a block punt. They had really no pressure on the quarterback. I'd like to see the defense and the special teams step up to the level of the offense. I'd like to see the Colonials play mistake-free. I think today they, they should take that step forward. Too many penalties, especially along the defense for Buffalo uh, versus Buffalo. And I think really the key is because they really didn't have that much film. It's a new staff, new offense. they got to be ready for that triple option today. Know their assignments and make sure they play mistake-free ball. Well, it's a good thing that heading into this game, Coach Clark and his staff had an inkling yeah. that uh, Kentucky State was going to go to the option because of the history of the coaching staff for the thoroughbreds that are across the field. Speaking of tape, uh, I talked about it with uh, Coach Clark, you know, Buffalo's got some tape on the Colonials this season. Robert Morris only has to rely on some, you know, personnel that they saw on tape from the thoroughbreds a year ago. And then yesterday they delved into YouTube to take a look at some of the JUCO transfers. Yeah, you just it's, it's a different world today with all the media that's out there, especially on YouTube and Huddle and things like that. They can go see who's on the roster and see if they can find old tapes on somebody. Um, I think there'll be uh, some adjustments made, obviously, in game, especially in the first half. And then I think you might see a little bit of a different strategy, especially defensively from first half to second half. We'll set the scene for our listeners on the iHeartRadio app, keyword RMU, and on ESPN Pittsburgh. Far sideline are the Kentucky State Thoroughbreds. They wear their road white uniforms, white jerseys, white pants, green numerals with the yellow gold trim, green helmets with a... Uh, what appears to be a horse on the side of the helmet. They're pretty far away at this point. Near sideline, Robert Morris Colonials mixing it up a bit uh, for their first home game of the year. The navy blue jerseys, the white pants, red numerals with the silver trim, and the Colonials going with the gray 
lids again as they will host the Kentucky State Thoroughbreds in this interclassification matchup. And, you know, Brian, last week, Robert Morris, they had a game against an FBS opponent. Yeah. This week, they take on a Division II opponent, and it's got to be something that the team leaders have to really motivate this team to stay focused, to, you know, not overlook a team like Kentucky State, who not only is Division II, but 0-10 a year ago. Yeah, and that's the maturity that they, this team needs to show, is they were amped up and ready to go against Buffalo. First time in history for this program, this very young program still, to take on an FBS program. And then now taking a step today, taking it against a statistically bad D2 school last year. they got to come out with the same approach, same hunger. And it starts with the coaches making sure they drive that into the team and, like you said, the leaders making sure that everybody is on the same page and ready to go at the start of the kickoff. Robert Morris will receive to begin this football game. A.J. Jackson will Head back to return this kick for RMU, and he'll be joined by Delano Madison. Kentucky State will be kicking off from right to left across your computer screen or radio dial, and kicking off for the Thoroughbreds is Maharea Keao, 5'10", 194-pound junior for the Thoroughbreds, who wears number 63, which, you know, sometimes you see kickers with 90s numbers or those down low numbers, but this guy wearing 63. Yeah, that's a very unique number. I mean, um, who knows what the staff's going to He might go down there, kick the ball, and go make the tackle. I mean, with 63, I expect some something big from him right now. Well, he's a bigger guy at uh, 5'10", 194 pounds. Kind of looks like a high school linebacker out there ready to kick this one off. And the thoroughbreds are set, and we are underway in Moon Township, PA. End over end kick will be caught by Jackson around the six yard line. He comes up the right hash with the football, spins his way forward across the 25 out towards the 27 yard line where the tackle is made by Amir Lee for the Thoroughbreds. And it'll be first and 10 for Robert Morris, the ball at the 27 yard line. Colonials from the sideline to the huddle where George Martin will set the Robert Morris Colonials offensive attack from the right hash. Redshirt sophomore center, McAllister steps over the football. Offset eye behind Martin, hand off. Stevens runs to his left-hand side, surges his way forward out to the 28, close to the 29, but the marker just shy of that 29-yard line where Xavier Hill makes the tackle for the Thoroughbreds. Yeah, Xavier Hill coming from safety position. He's listed 6'2", 205 as a true freshman. So, again, even because they have the too deep here they're still making some changes another true freshman making his first appearance today in college football twins to either side martin in the shotgun side card to his left and stevens martin's going to run to his left as he tucks the football tries to turn the corner to the far boundary dives his way out to the 30 yard line so it'll be a pickup to, of two and that brings up third down and seven before jalen dingle makes the tackle for the Kentucky State Thoroughbreds. Yeah, interesting play call right there. Spread everybody out, four wide receivers. You got Jackson to your left, and it's a design quarterback draw, and it didn't look like anybody really blocked anybody on the left-hand side. They, I think we're expecting a heavy rush or a blitz, and, boy, Kentucky State's defense was ready for that, and good job by Dingle right there with an open field tackle. Now Robin Moore is facing third and seven. Colonial send a bunch trips to the right-hand side. One receiver to the far side left. Martin, straight drop back out of the shotgun. Feels some pressure. Dumps it off near sideline as he looks for the H-back Dylan Smith. But the pass is short. Incomplete pass brings up fourth and seven. And the punt unit has to come on for RMU. Yeah, good pass rush right there by Chris Rogers, uh, graduate. 6'3", 3, 3, uh, 320, defensive end. 320 pound defensive end, but they're playing traditional 3 4 defense, so it's really a defensive tackle. Just shifted out wide, got great pressure, pushing uh, Romali back into Martin's face, forcing him to step up in the pocket, scramble, and Martin with that pressure was throwing that ball short. Three and out for this Robert Morris offense, not how they wanted to start. George Souders set to punt, and let's hope his first punt of this game against the Thoroughbreds goes better than it did against the Bulls. And he gets it away, and it's a spiraling punt that will. Head towards the 25-yard line where it'll be returned by Lawler. And Lawler takes a couple of steps backwards, surges out of the first wave of tacklers, drives his way out towards the 30-yard line before he's brought down by Janar Walker, amongst others. And it'll be first and 10 
for the Thoroughbreds, the ball on the right hash at their own 30. Yeah, great little return right there. Caught it on the left-hand side, close to us, went all the way to the right. Looked like he was going to get tackled for a little bit of a loss and able to keep his balance and spring forward, pick up maybe three, four yards on that return. Ultimately, probably ran about 30 yards. And now here comes this Kentucky State offense. Let's see what they do here if they break out that triple option. So the Thoroughbreds. Going to set wings to either side, back directly behind the quarterback, uh, Jalen Myers. Motion man from right to left is the wing. He'll take the pitch and carrying the football. Brendan Lawler carries out across the 35 to the 36-yard line where Jared Harris makes the tackle for Robert Morris. Gain of six brings up second down and four. So the ball now on the left hash for the Kentucky State Thoroughbreds in between the 36 and 37 yard line. So it's second and about three and a half for the visitors. Again, wings split to either side, one back behind the quarterback, Myers. Myers running the triple option and he'll hand off to the fullback. Nowhere to go as he's stacked up by Supi Maley. And of about a half a yard for the fullback, Brett Silv. Silv, the lone back returning for Kentucky State who had any stats from a year ago. And if you think the triple option is old school, Kentucky State even doing plays from the sideline old school. They're actually giving it to a player. He's subbing one guy out, and they're actually telling it to the quarterback. So no hand signals, no fancy boards here. So very old school approach to start this game for Kentucky State. Twins to the right, one receiver to the near side left, wing to the right as the quarterback Myers rolls to his right-hand side. The pass short for Jonathan Powell as it skips into his chest incomplete. And that brings up fourth down and three, and the punt unit comes on for the Thoroughbreds. Yeah, three and out for Kentucky State. They had a guy wide open. Ball just bounced off that quarter, uh, wide receiver's chest. Enough for the first down, but Rob Morris will take it. Now they get a little taste of what Kentucky State's going to do. And a very smart play by them, rolling that quarterback out on the edge to get him some protection because Robert Morris can bring some pressure up the middle against his undersized offensive line. Michael Bow back on to punt it away for Kentucky State as they spread it out on the punt unit. Good snap, and the punt is away. Sky-high spiraling punt, which will be returned by Mason Gray. Who fair catches it right around the 22 and the Colonials their second possession of the game will start at their own 22 yard line on the right hash yeah now let's see that the offense comes out here with let's see if they can get Stevens going and uh, Kentucky State coming out here defensively with a 3-4 look and they're really pushing those inside linebackers up over the guard it's almost like a 4-4 look for them and they're really trying to crowd the, in between the tackles forcing Rob Morris to go outside where Kentucky State can utilize their speed Armu sends a wing to the left, a receiver to the far boundary left, and one slot to the near side right. Sidecar to the right-hand side of Martin is Stevens, and Stevens drives his way from the 22 out to the 24-yard line where Justin Hooks makes the tackle for Kentucky State. Also went on the tackle, Ernest Austin, 6'1", 380-pound freshman that plays uh, right defensive end, wearing number 95. Yeah, I mean, you have 300 plus right there, and Hooks, six foot, 340, traditional nose guard, just eats space up in there. He's not looking to get pressure up the middle. Uh, Robert Morris is going to have to figure out how are they going to get these big guys out of those gaps right there so Stevens can break free. Martin steps under center, play action, looks to his right, throws to his right, and again he looks for the H back in Dylan Smith, but Smith and Martin not on the same page, and the incomplete pass brings up third down and nine. Yeah, good protection right there for Robert Morris, and a little bit of an out and up right there, sort of like what Buffalo did last week, and Martin, two throws, and just looks a little off right now, and uh, that ball just not even close, really just sailing out of bounds. And the play action fake certainly froze the linebackers for Kentucky State, and that allowed Dylan Smith to get behind the D-back over on this near side. RMU splits twins to the left-hand side, slot to the left, and one receiver split to the near side right. Martin shotgun, sidecar to his right. Takes the snap, looks across the flat, finds Madison. Madison out across the 30, and he'll be brought down right near the first down flag. We're going to have to maybe 
Uh, see the sticks come out. Now they're going to say just enough for the first down to the 32-yard line. So a pickup of about nine, and it's first and ten for Robert Morris, their first first down of the game. Yeah, one line pattern right there. Madison actually split far sideline to the right, actually just picked his way through very slowly, allowed the linebackers to drop, and he replaced where the linebackers was and was going against true freshman Brandon Wade, who we were talking about earlier making his uh, first start today. And was able to use his speed to get a little separation. Martin did a good enough job to make a pass right there and was taken down right at the sticks. Two receivers right, one to the far numbers left as Martin in the shotgun hands off. Stevens running to his right-hand side, leaps over a tackler. He crosses the 40 inside of the 50, spinning his way inside of the 45 and finally cut from behind at the 42-yard line. Tackle on the play by Jordan White, the defensive back. Yeah, Kentucky State bringing in a lot of different players right there, but great job. They went to a counter to the right-hand side, a little bit wide. Linebacker shot underneath. Jackson, I mean, yeah, Jackson right there, just really breaking a lot of different tackles. Excuse me, Stevens breaking a lot of different tackles right there. Actually looked like a Madden player, doing a little bit of a spin, a little bit of power move right there. It's good to see him trying to get going. Colonial send a bunch to the slot left, one receiver to the near side right. As Martin pitches to the left-hand side, Stevens again takes the carry, has a crease inside of the 35, driving his way towards the 30-yard line. He'll have enough for the first down, where he's brought down by Ernest Banks, among others. Yeah, Banks, the previous play, missed a tackle in the backfield. This time he wasn't going to miss it this time, but still, Stevens picking up 10 yards, and if you go by where he got the ball, it was actually about a 15-yard 15 15 yard game, but they're only going to give him 10. Stevens now starting to get a little bit into the game. I think he could have had a little bit more if he would have broke to the outside, but he wants to just put his head down and go forward. Well, it's good to see him get things rolling after a really tough go of it uh, a week plus ago against Buffalo, just 1.7 yards per carry. Twins right. Twins to the short side left as well as Martin on the left hash in the shotgun. Looks left the whole way, throws to his left-hand side. Has a receiver wide open over there, and the ball in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Garrett Hauser. Yeah, Hauser, one of those young players that Colonial staff is very high on. They want to make sure to see what this young player can do. And uh, just a mental mistake right there. He was wide open. He went to catch the ball, took his eyes off it because he's already looking upfield. So young man will learn. Catch the ball first. Be happy with the five-yard completion. Don't look to make a big play. Catch it first, then go. A week ago, Hauser, two catches for 11 yards, including one covering nine yards for RMU. RMU splits two receivers to the near side right, a slot to the right as well. As Martin in the shotgun hands off Jackson, trying to cut his way around the right corner, but he's brought down by Devontae Wright, the aforementioned 5'10", 240-pound two-way lineman. And a loss on that play of six yards brings up third and 16. So the Colonials were moving the ball well, but now they face third and long and the close to out of field goal range. Right yeah, now. unfortunately, you know, bad play right there. And, and Martin's going to have to learn, and maybe they don't have – turn the reins over to him enough back-to-back defensive plays where they were bringing uh, pressure off the corner and they were going zero coverage it was easily identifiable the play before which they were lucky because they threw away from the blitz this time running into the blitz Martin's got to be able to see that he's got to check out of that and go to a play where he can get better success than just giving the ball twins to either side Martin straight drop back feels some pressure from behind finds Petrick in the flat he slides down at the 22-yard line. It'll be just shy of the first down flag, bringing up fourth down and one. And it's decision time for head coach Bernard Clark Jr. Looks like RMU is going to bring the bunch package on and go for it on fourth and one at the 22. Yeah, it looks like they're going to bring in a little bit more um, meat in there, if you will, just to make sure that sure up. It looks like they're going to bring... Um, Monday in there as an extra offensive lineman. Looks like fourth and short. They're going to try to push this way through to get the first down. Power eye backfield. Hand off. And the ball carrier drives his way to the 20-yard line. A pickup of two for RMU. Carrying the ball for Robert Morris that time. A.J. Jackson. Jackson went 85 yards a week ago. Picks up two valuable yards. And the Colonials continue this drive. Now they're inside of the red zone at the 20. Yeah, good job by Coach Clark and the staff right there, making sure that the offense just kept that momentum going. They went on a quick snap right there, just ran to the right, and Jackson actually got hit. The line of scrimmage did a great job spinning forward to pick up the first down. One receiver to the far side left, slot to the near side right. A wing to the left of the formation as well as Jackson takes the handoff. No play action, and Martin pulled it out of the belly of Jackson and looked for Madison down near the goal line, but the pass was too high, and that brings up second down and 10 from the 20. You know, good play right there, good call, right call against that defense. They went zero coverage. A safety came out of the center field to pick up. Good play action pass, and had 101. 
deep post pattern that we saw against Buffalo. This time, Martin, again, just a little bit off on his passes. That ball sailing well over the head of both players. 7-12 to play in a scoreless first quarter. Robert Morris has the ball second and 10 at the Thoroughbreds 20-yard line. Trip to the left, one receiver to the short side right. Martin in the shotgun. RMU sets up the screen. Jackson has room inside of the 10. Spun down at the six-yard line. Tackle on the play by Kentucky State's Xavier Johnson, but RMU has it first in goal at the six. You know, good job right there. This is the first time we saw them actually do a screenplay this season. They looked to the left, they dumped the ball to Jackson to the right. Great job by Alex Minford, who actually was out there in front and peeled back to pick up a, a linebacker coming underneath of Spring Jackson. And uh, boy, Jackson took probably the hardest hit he has all season against his own teammate, Eric, Eric McAllister, who was looking to come down and clean the clock. Yeah, as Johnson spun Jackson, McAllister ran into Jackson, and that collision really shook up uh, Jackson, at least for a moment. Timeout on the field by Kentucky State, so we will step away to back in a minute. It's RMU football on ESPN Pittsburgh and the iHeartRadio app keyword RMU. For 150 years of passion and tradition, enduring legacies and indelible memories, we celebrate the good in the game. After a thoroughbreds timeout, it's first and goal for Robert Morris. The ball at the Kentucky State six-yard line as the Colonials pushing this ball from their own 22 down to the six right now, and they have it first and goal. Motion man from right to left as the handoff goes to Stevens. He cuts left, drives his way forward inside of the five, brought down at the two-yard line. Down at the bottom of the pile is Jacob Abrams, also uh, Banks on the stop for Kentucky State. Yeah, if I'm Robert Morris right now, this is just Steven's series. Just allow the senior to just pull his way in there. I'd go two more running plays in, maybe even three, go for it on fourth down, just to send a message. Try to wear down this big defensive line and just start pushing around. I think Stevens get the call here, ultimately get a touchdown. Offset eye backfield, two receivers to the right-hand side, handoff. Stevens, big hole, and he spins his way into the end zone for a two-yard Robert Morris touchdown. Well, you got to reward the senior. He had an off game last week, and he started off a little slow. Now he's really starting to pick it up, and so is this offensive line. Robert Morris out to an early, soon-to-be 7-0 lead. Basically on to attempt the PAT after the two-yard touchdown run by Terrence Stevens. And the vast majority of that drive on the ground. Souders the holder. The kick by Baseglia is up and good. And with six minutes to play in the first quarter, it's Robert Morris 7, Kentucky State 0. It's Robert Morris football on ESPN Pittsburgh and the iHeartRadio app keyword RMU. So I guess this will be a minute, Kellen. now. Mike Benson's kick carries into the end zone for a touchback so Kentucky State will start their second drive of the game at their own 25 yard line. 
Again, that 78-yard drive occupied 13 plays in 5 minutes and 49 seconds off of the clock. You know, good good second series right there for the Colonials. Made some adjustments. I think that a little shock and awe by both units uh, for the Colonials to start the game, offense and defense. And, uh, boy, the offense was really turning the page right there. Now let's see if the defense can actually continue this against a team that's going to be really tested in with this triple option. Ball will be set at the left hash as Kentucky State gets their instructions from the sideline and will go from the sideline straight to the line of scrimmage. Jalen Meyer steps under center. Wings to either side. Motion man from left to right. He'll take the pitch. The ball carrier is Telfy. Telfy to that far sideline. Met right near the line of scrimmage and then tossed out of bounds by Mason Gray. Yeah, Mason Gray flying everywhere. Did a great job. It's one of those option sweep plays where they bring the guy from the wing, fake it. Does a, Quarterback does a reverse out, does a huge reverse pitch, and they just pull a whole bunch of guys out there. And Gray was able to read that, come on, make a sure tackle for about a one-yard gain. So they'll move the ball to about the 26-yard line. So it's second and a long nine. As the thoroughbred said, one receiver to the wide side left, one to the short side right. Telfy the motion man. Now they're going to run the option to the near side left. The Colonials anticipating that one well. And as the pitch goes to Lawler, he is brought down right near the line of scrimmage. Mason Gray in on the tackle, also Jacob White. Yeah, two safeties up there doing a great job. And when you defend the triple option, it's about assignment. One guy, usually the middle linebacker, is going to have the uh, fullback. Next guy up is going to have the quarterback, and someone's going to have the pitch guy. That's usually your safeties right there. You usually play a lot of zero or one free coverage right there. Great job by the Colonials so far playing mistake-free ball. Two receivers to the wide side right, one to the short side left on third down and eight for the thoroughbreds. As the quarterback Myers runs to his right-hand side, completes a pass to that far boundary, making the catch Jonathan Powell before he's shouldered out of bounds by a Colonial, but a couple of flags down both near the line of scrimmage as well as coming from one of the back officials. Yeah, we're easy. Have to sort this one out. Yeah, easy call. I think it's going to be hold. At least the first flag is going to be holding. I'm not sure what the second one is, but they picked up both flags and put them right next to each other. So Tyler Telfy, the guilty party on the hole. And so instead of a first down pass for Kentucky State, the thoroughbreds are going to be pushed back from the line of scrimmage back to the 22. So that brings up third down and 18. Yeah. Uh, excuse you, me, the ball at the 17. Yeah, so, sorry about that. I was just going to say, you know, you saw films on this quarterback. I mean, Myers elusiveness right can run a little bit make things create in the pocket what i saw mostly is that when myers he's good in the pocket but when he can run a little bit when he can scramble out of that pocket mm -hmm. that's when he's a better thrower than he is even inside settling down this time myers runs to the right on the option finds a crease drives his way forward wrapped from behind and brought down by brady hours and a gain of about nine brings up fourth down and nine yeah almost got back to the original line of scrimmage on third down but now Rob Moore's defense does a great job forcing another punt right there. And you're right, Myers, boy, he just looks like a different player when he's outside of that pocket right there, even running the option. He had a little bit of acceleration right there, putting his shoulder down, almost just like Stevens out there running the ball. So the punt unit on for Kentucky State as Bobak will punt it away, the 5'11", 215-pound sophomore. Looks like Vecchio back to return as a flag comes in at the snap. And the punt is fair, caught by Vecchio right around the 35-yard line. They'll spot it at the 37. And the headlines, they're going to check in with the official, but it appears to go against Kentucky State. So Bernard Clark Jr. has to make a decision on where to enforce this. Yeah, did you, uh, did you want to just take the ball where it is? Pretty good field position? Or force him to repunt that again? So it'll be interesting to see what he does. I think Vecchio, if they can get one or two blocks, he has an opportunity to make a return. Uh, the call is still a wait is a formational penalty against Kentucky State. And that's a great option is to accept a penalty and add it to the end of the kick. Mm. 
as opposed to forcing Kentucky State to re-punt because a fair catch at the 37-yard line, you had five yards to that, and it really sets you up in good position at the 42. Yeah, very good. Almost great field position for the Colonials compared to like last week when they were really pinned deep back in their own territory, and it actually took Robert Morris to uh, really change the field position right here now. Robert Morris in an ideal formation coming out here near midfield. Ball on the left hash, first and 10 from the 42. Martin in the shotgun, two receivers to the right-hand side. And as he tried to dump it off to A.J. Jackson, breaking on the football for the thoroughbreds is Cal Morris Robinson, the linebacker, and he just had it bounce off of his chest plate. If not, he may have gone to the house. Yeah, I mean, Martin going through his progressions right there, but you just can't assume when you go through your progression that your check down is always going to be wide open. Great job by the linebacker. If he didn't bounce that ball off his chest and Martin threw that ball, I think, as hard as he could, if he was playing darts, that dart would have went through the dartboard. Bounce off that linebacker's chest. If he doesn't throw that ball as hard, that linebacker catches it, it's 7-7. Martin right now, I, I, I don't know what it is, just seems a little off right now in the first quarter. Offset eye behind Martin, motion man from left to right, and the Colonial is going to run the end around as the ball carrier is the receiver, Garrett Hauser, and Hauser takes it out to the 45-yard line for a gain of three tackle made by Jalen Dingle, and that brings up third down and seven. Yeah, a little bit of trying to get to the outside of this defense right here. Last week it was Vecchio doing those end arounds. Now it's Hauser getting sort of this jet sweep. And a great job by the defense right now. Now sets up third and seven. Don't be surprised. They've been allowing Martin to just sit in the pocket and ultimately find people. Now if they bring a little bit of pressure trying to make him scramble, I think they feel that he's off right now. Martin in the shotgun. Sidecar to his left wing to the right. Two receivers to the far side left. Martin feels some pressure. Steps up into the pocket. Tries to dump it off to the back out of the backfield. And Jackson can't hang on to that one. And that incomplete pass brings up fourth down and seven. And the Colonials forced to punt again. Yeah, a little bit of pressure on the right-hand side right there. And it was actually, it looked like a mistake by the Kentucky State defense. It looked like three guys were trying to go to the same gap. They all came together like Voltron, and then they separated all out. And I think that that separation right there confused the running back and the offensive line to the right-hand side right there. And they were able to get some pressure to the outside. Forced Martin up into the pocket, but that forcing up, that defensive line is so strong. They're just pushing everything back. Martin just getting a little bit of pressure, unable to complete that pass. Souders gets away a beauty that will spiral into the hands of the return man at the 17-yard uh, line where it's fair caught by Brendan Lawler and a long field for the Thoroughbreds to work with from their own 17. 2.24 to play here in the first quarter. Robert Morris on top of the Kentucky State Thoroughbreds, 7 to nothing. First of two straight home games for the Colonials next week. RMU takes on the Dayton Flyers kickoff at 3 p.m. and it's homecoming here at Joe Walton Stadium. Come out to campus early in the day between 9 and 12 and pick your seats for the RMU men's and women's basketball seasons as it's going to be the second of uh, what we assume to be at least two. Yeah. Uh, select a seat promotions here at Robert Morris for your season tickets for the RMU men's and women's basketball seasons at the brand new UPMC Events Center. Play action as Myers throws a pass to the near side left. He was looking for Nathaniel Miles, and breaking that pass up is uh, Garrett Fairman. Fairman, who initially this season was listed as a defensive back, has shifted to a linebacker and made a great play on the ball there. Yeah, and just really a, a new sort of defensive backs and actually almost like a 3-3-5 look right here for the Colonials. Uh, Huggins is in there as well, outside linebacker, but they actually more like a 3-3-5 lineup for them today against this triple offense, uh, a triple option offense. Myers has a motion man from left to right. He's going to hand off to the fullback, and uh, Brett Selv is met near the line of scrimmage, drives his way out to the 20 before he's brought down by a handful of Colonials, including Chris Stanford, one of the many... Colonials defensive linemen that are going to rotate through that defensive front. Yeah, Chris Stanford Sr., you know, seems like someone that we've been calling forever, has been a part of this program for a long time, actually named a senior captain this year, and good to see him out there and calling his name after last week. A little bit slow to get off the field against Buffalo as he was rolled up too as well. Again, wings to either side, one back behind Myers, one receiver to either side on third down and seven from the 20-yard line. 
Myers fakes the pitch, looks right the whole way, throws to his right-hand side, and the pass is incomplete over on that far boundary. A nice job by the Colonial D-back over there on that far boundary, uh, Taven Harville, to carry uh, Powell out of bounds and prevent him from coming down with any feet inbound. Yeah, Powell using his big body going up high to catch that ball, but Harville did a great job at timing it. As he's about to come down, he just simply pushes him out of bounds, and that was it. He couldn't drag his feet inbounds. Robert Morris defense, again, doing a great job substituting some new faces in there, making some adjustments, and they're still being able to do what they can to slow down this offense. Big Ernest Austin, the 380-pound freshman, is one of the protectors for the Kentucky State punter, Michael Boback. And too many men on the field, and Kentucky State is going to be backed up five yards. 124 to play here. Robert Moore is up 7 0 in quarter number one. And I'll tell you, that's something you don't see every day. Big fellas as the protectors for the punter. We've got uh, Devontae Wright, 5'10, 245 pounds, is one of them. Another one, uh, Eliza Hernandez, 6'4, 320. And then we already talked about the big fella, Ernest Austin, at 380. Close to 1,000 pounds in front of that punter. Another punt fair caught by Vecchio. This one right near the midfield stripe. Robert Morris will start this drive first and 10 at their own 49 after Boback skied that one and didn't get a lot of distance to it. So the Colonial second time today with good field position. We're going to see Caleb Lewis come in at quarterback for Robert Morris, second game this year, where we see Lewis come in in the substitution role for George Martin. Yeah, Martin statistically, and it just looks like a little bit off. Robert Morris offense starting to try to get something going and bring it in Lewis to see if he could be that spark. Lewis hands off, the ball carrier Jackson, he's met in the backfield, is coming from the right outside linebacker position comes Xavier Hill, and he makes the stop at the backfield. And a flag after the play as Garrett Hauser has his lid ripped off. I think we're going to have a personal foul go against Kentucky State, which is going to negate a loss by the Thoroughbreds. Look like Wade, Brandon Wade, the D-back, was the one who got into it with Hauser. So Wade charged with the unsportsmanlike conduct. So instead of a loss of three, it'll be a pickup on the play of about 11. And the Colonials will have the ball first and 10 at the Thoroughbreds 39-yard line. Yeah, and two young players, one, Wade, a, a true freshman, and Hauser, a redshirted sophomore, I believe. They're really going at it downfield blocking, and motions get, hands get up to the face, and I think Wade just got a little bit too much under the face and ripped off that helmet. Nowhere to go for A.J. Jackson as in the backfield was Ernest Austin, the 6'1", 380-pound freshman D end. And Robert Morris being a little bit too predictable in Kentucky State defense is taking advantage of a Robert Morris first and 10. They've been really throw, uh, running the ball a little bit. And Kentucky State is bringing everybody. They're going zero coverage. They're, they're mugging up those linebackers over the guards. Robert Morris offense, they're going to have to start doing some check with me's or something like this to make sure that the quarterback has two plays, give him a little bit of option, a little bit of freedom to adjust at the line of scrimmage when he sees a known blitz coming. Second and 13 as the Colonials split twins to either side. And... Martin, or rather, that's a Lewis looking to the near side right, finds Hauser tackle on the play by Samuel Brown, and Brown gave Hauser a mouthful. Yeah, Brown doing a good job right there, waiting for him to catch the ball, turn around, and did a really good tackle. Tackle actually with his chest, wrapped him up and drove him to the ground. Now Robert Moore set up about a third and seven right now, but it looks like we're going to get through and head into the second quarter. Pickup of about six. And that brings up third down and seven. There's a timeout on the field because that's the end of the first quarter. It's Robert Morris seven and Kentucky State zero. You're tuned in to Robert Morris football on ESPN Pittsburgh and the iHeartRadio app keyword RMU. Hey, come on, Chick-fil-A Robinson. Hey. 
ESPN Pittsburgh as Terrence Stevens takes the first play of the second quarter and drives his way from the 36-yard line down to the 26-yard line, a pickup of 10 before Xavier Johnson makes the stop for the Kentucky State Thoroughbreds and the Colonials driving the ball deeper and deeper into Thoroughbreds territory. And that's a very good job. Rob Morris going double slots on both sides, putting Lewis back in there. Lewis actually coming in for Martin, who's not hurt, was just a little bit off and just trying to keep this offense going. Do a good job, spread everybody out and do a little bit of see what the defense is going. Lewis able to scan over everything, continues to give the ball to Stevens, who picks up a good chunk of yards for that first down. Stevens, side card to the left-hand side of the quarterback, Lewis. There's twin split to either side. Lewis, play action, looks left, and as he's looking for uh, Deontay White, the pass is incomplete, and that brings up second down and 10. Yeah, a little bit of miscommunication right there. Lewis saw it the whole way, that blitz coming, and boy, wide receiver just doesn't run his quarter pattern and just looks right now for the ball. That's probably a touchdown right there, but that's just a little bit of a classic quarterback, wide receiver not being on the same page. So second down and 10, the ball at the 27 in the middle of the field. RMU out of the huddle, shotgun formation with Stevens over the left shoulder of Caleb Lewis, wing to the right of the formation. Play action as the pass comes to the near side. Left to White. Deontay White hesitates. Drives his way inside of the 20. Hauling tacklers with him down towards the 17-yard line. And that'll be just enough uh, for the first down from the 27 to the 17 before Brandon Wade makes the tackle for the Thoroughbreds. Wade inserted back into the defense after a personal foul. A good job right there by Lewis making sure to throw that ball in there. Wide receiver doing an excellent job securing it, catching it, turning around. White doing a good job two hands on the ball lowering his shoulder right there picking up the first down Lois Lewis under center with an offset eye behind him tight end to the right of the formation as the handoff goes to Stevens who dances his way towards the line of scrimmage before being driven back and the two big guys up the gut Chris Roberts and Ernest Austin making the tackle and you add those two guys up and you're over 700 pounds in just two men in Austin and Roberts and Austin, number 95, listed at 6'3", 280. Uh, if he's 280, wow. No, he's 380. Oh, because on the two deep, it says 280. Ah, well, oh, okay. Well, if, you, if you look at, at the full roster, 380, which seems more accurate. It seems more. I, the, again, these big defensive tackles are doing a well of a job against, the, you know, the two guards in the center for the Colonials. They're going to have to do something where they start tacking to the outside. RMU sent five wides out there, but the... Formation had broken down because the Colonial split four to the near side left before sending two to the far side right, and the play clock was winding down. And Bernard Clark Jr. needed to take a timeout, so we're going to step away to 12.57 to play. Second quarter, Robert Morris 7, Kentucky State 0. It's Colonial's football on ESPN Pittsburgh and the iHeartRadio app keyword RMU. Robert Morris on top of Kentucky State, 7 to nothing. The Colonials have it second down the end, 12, inside of the Thoroughbreds red zone at the 19-yard line. Third time today we see the Colonials inside of Thoroughbreds territory. Came up empty on their second of three times, but did score on a two-yard touchdown run, capping off a 13-play 78-yard drive. That occupied 549 in quarter number one, the lone score of the game that two-yard TD by Terrence Stevens. And Stevens in that first quarter, just, I know he has a little bit extra number, six carries, 45 yards on a day. Stevens has the ball pulled out of his belly as Lewis looks to his left-hand side and finds Delano Madison, and Madison brought down near the 11-yard line. As a thoroughbred loses his lid, he's going to have to head to the sideline. And the Colonials now facing a third and much more manageable uh, about four from the 11 yard line. The line to gain is the seven. Ball's on the left hash. As Lewis will send a slot and a receiver to the right and a wing to the left hand side. Now he'll motion to the right, sending trips to the right of the formation. Lewis looks right the whole way, feels some pressure. Now has some room to his left-hand side. He's inside of the five, driving his way down towards the two-yard line before the tackle is made by Samuel Brown, but some wheels there by Lewis. Yeah, great job by Lewis. Actually looking to his right and feeling that pressure coming back from the, uh, actually his front side, being that he's a lefty, 
looking to his right, three wide receivers to the right, didn't like what he saw, felt pressure coming up, sidestepped it, looks like he was going to run to the pressure to the right, actually went back to the left, lowered his shoulder, now it's first and goal for the Colonials, Lewis coming in, spelling Martin, who was struggling a little bit, looking very comfortable out there so far. Lewis will step under center, two receivers to the left, offset on behind him. Motion man from left to right. The ball falls out of the hands of Lewis. The Colonials were setting up a trap up in the middle, and the left guard hit into Lewis. The ball knocked out of his hands, and the football covered up by Xavier Johnson. And it'll be first and 10 for Kentucky State at the six-yard line, and the Colonials come up empty after having the ball first and goal at the two. Yeah, they're going to look at the replay, but it's clearly obvious that that's exactly what happened. Dylan Young pulling from his left guard position, bumps into Lewis as he was reversing out. Lewis didn't do a very good job as a quarterback securing that ball once he got it from the center, and that ball bounced free. Lewis trying to jump on it, but Kentucky State getting a big break right there. First and goal for the Colonials, and they get a turnover. Now defense has to come out here, continue looking, push deep to get the Robert Morris offense back that ball. 11.39 to play in the second quarter. It's still Robert Morris 7, Kentucky State 0. And a nice drive by the Colonials offense, all for naught after the fumble by Lewis. Now the visitors have it first and 10 at their own 6. Wing from left to right in motion, but the handoff will go to Sile. And Sile drives his way out towards the 9-yard line before being brought down by uh, Ezra Tupuola. Pick up on that play of about three. Brings up second down and seven from the nine with a line to gain the 16-yard line. Ball's over on the right hash right now. Myers steps under center. One back behind him. Motion man from right to left is Miles. Handoff goes up the middle. And it's again Salve who drives his way out across the 15 towards the 16-yard line. And it looked like uh, he was going to be brought down shy of the line to gain, but instead he had a second surge and drove his way out to the first down flag. Yeah, and Fairman in there trying to strip the ball out. Actually, looked like he was trying to punch the player, and actually he was trying to punch the ball. And I think that that extra push from the offensive line trying to get to Fairman actually allowed him to get that first down now. A little bit more breathing room for this Kentucky State offense, and let's see if they try to put it up through the air and get Myers out on the edge. First first down of the game for Kentucky State on that rush by Sylvie. And a timeout by the Thoroughbreds, so we'll take a breather too. Ten and a half minutes to play in the second quarter. We'll step away for a minute. It's Robert Morris football on ESPN Pittsburgh and the iHeart Ready Rap keyword RMU. First and 10 for Kentucky State. The ball at their own 16-yard line with 10 and a half minutes to play in the second quarter. RMU up 7-0 as the ball goes to the tailback. Brett Sylvie, and Sylvie is brought down by Ezra Tupuola. Gain of five brings up second down and five as Kentucky State start to move the ball on the ground. Actually give him six, and it's second and four. Yeah, they're getting some success with giving that ball and the triple option up to the fullback, and he's just turning those legs, putting that head down, spinning off tackles. Robert Morris just oversizing, overpowering this offensive line, but they're just getting in their way um, for the offensive line, Kentucky State. That's all you need to do is just get in someone's way and let that running back just try to find a hole. Samuel Myers under center. He's going to run the option to the right hand, to the left hand side rather. And Nathaniel Myers takes the pitch and runs to the far boundary. He's strung out by Jacob White. We're going to gain on that play of about three out to the 25. Brings up third down and one. We'll actually give him the 26 yard line, so enough for the first down. From our vantage point, and granted it was across the field, uh, it looked like Jacob White had strung him out to that far sideline at the 25, but. 
They'll say the 26 instead, and it's first and 10, the second first down of the game for Kentucky State coming back-to-back -back here on this first drive they have in the second quarter. Yeah, and they started very deep in their own territory after that Lewis fumble first and goal at the Colonials. Lou, uh, Jacob White doing a great job right there, fighting off that cut block and pushing the running back out of bounds, but enough for the first down. Sylvia, again, the character, the uh, ball carrier as he drives his way across the 30 to 31 yard line where Anello Bazzacco makes the tackle for Robert Morris. And Buzz at the bottom of the pile. And let's talk about this Colonials defensive formation. Not the traditional linebackers we see for Robert Morris. A lot of the longer, leaner, faster uh, linebackers that Robert Morris had. You talked about that 3 3 5 as they have those four, you know, taller, thinner linebackers uh, ranging around that three-man defensive front. Yeah, and what they're doing is, is they're bringing in different players, different linebackers, and what I'm starting to see right now, which is a little concerning, is that the defense is waiting and catching the running backs. This is why they're able to get good yardage after the point of contact. This time the quarterback Jalen Myers carries the football from the 31 out to the 34-yard line. Tackle made by the defensive lineman Jared Harris. And a pickup on that play of about two brings up third down and two with the ball at the 34. The line to gain is the 36. Clock winds under eight minutes to play here in the second quarter. Robert Morris up seven zip. Kentucky State looking to take advantage of a Robert Morris fumble after they had it first and goal at the two. This drive for the thoroughbred starting at their own six. Myers pitches to the near side right. Havon Price can't make the tackle in the backfield as Lawler slides through that tackle, drives his way forward, mm. picks up the first down. Lawler still on his feet as virtually every navy blue jersey is in there. After the Thoroughbreds pick up another first down on this drive, again that started at their own six, and now Kentucky State has it first and ten at their own 38. Yeah, Robert Morris... They're, now they're bringing in new defensive linemen, and what they're doing, now they're looking like a 3-4 team. But really, those four linebackers, Fairman, Ours, Buzz, and Huggins, a safety playing outside linebacker. So they're going very small, very lean, and I know that they're going against a very skilled team with a triple option, but you're putting new personnel in there, probably playing for the first time in a new position. You know, right now, Kentucky State taking advantage of that, being more aggressive along the offense. Myers running the left-hand side on the option. Didn't have an opportunity to get the pitch out of there as the tackle uh, was made by Brady Hours. A short gain on that play. Brings up second down and nine at the 39-yard line. Line to gain is the 48 as the ball is now set at the left hash. And it's tough to see if the Colonials were trying to do any type of run blitz to try to disrupt this triple option because it's so fast. As soon as the quarterback gets the ball, that fullback is on him right away, and he's just taking that ball and extending it out to his right or left, almost to the guard tackle gap area and reading the end man of the line of scrimmage. If he crashes down, he pulls the ball. If the defensive end goes up the field, he's giving it to the fullback. Myers fakes the pitch, boots to the left, shovel pass to that far sideline, looking for Sylvie, but the pass was incomplete. Sylvie couldn't hang on to the shovel pass, and that brings up third down and nine. Yeah, Sylvie actually came out right there against uh, the linebacker uh, for the Colonials and actually looked like he was going to block, chucked him a little bit, and then released him to the flat. Myers saw him and did a, you know, one of those fancy little Brett Favre pitches upfield for a pass, and running back was unable to secure it as he's fallen out of bounds, and now third and long for Kentucky State. 6-10 as the clock is stopped here in the second quarter. Robert Moore is up 7-0. Thoroughbreds with the ball third and nine on the left hash at their own 39-yard line. They've driven this ball 33 yards thus far on this drive. As Meyer steps under center, fakes the pitch, looks to his left the whole way, throws to his left-hand side, has a receiver wide open on that far sideline as the receiver, uh, Marquise Livers, sagged underneath Hevon Price. And Price finally forces him out of bounds, but not before the Thoroughbreds move the ball into Colonial's territory to the 42-yard line. And they're probably wondering why is Price giving him so much of a cushion? He doesn't have any, he doesn't have any protection over top. He doesn't have a safety to help him if he gets beat over top. So he has to be a little bit safe and play a little bit of soft coverage right there. But good job, good timing by the quarterback and wide receiver. Now, Kentucky State for the first time in Colonials territory. One back set behind Myers. Wing motions from left to right as the handoff will go to Sylvie. He tries to reverse his field, but no dice there as Victor Solorin makes the tackle in the backfield, the six-foot junior. 
Yeah, Victor, one of those new name colonial defensive linemen that's been rotating in. This has been a long, you know, dragged out offensive series for Kentucky State. And you're always fighting, you know, double teams against the triple option. And it's Colonial's defensive line is getting tired right now. Colonial's no pressure on the quarterback. They're not making tackles or pursuits in the backfield. they got to get something going on defense. Try to take some chances, make some blitz calls, put some pressure on this quarterback. 54-yard drive thus far for Kentucky State as they have it second down and eight at the Colonial's 40-yard line. Pass to the near side right for Jonathan Powell, and Powell is chucked out of bounds by Havon Price. Short gain on the play from the 40 to around the 37-yard line. That brings up third down and a handful for the Thoroughbreds as the ball will be on the right hash. Yeah, Powell, one of those transfers I noted in the pregame, one of the five transfers starting for Kentucky State and Myers to Powell, you know, that's probably an easy connection right there for them just because two new faces, they want to get a chemistry. But Powell, one of the bigger wide receivers out there, 6'2", 200 pounds. So very good size, very good speed for this Kentucky State offense. Myers steps under center, wings to either side. Receivers split to either side as well. Motion man from left to right, and instead Myers is going to keep it himself, spins out of a tackle, drives his way inside of Hours, and finally brought down at around the 26-yard line. Big pick up there for Myers before he's finally brought down, and it's pushing and shoving after the play between Myers and Mason Gray, who made the stop for RMU. And what we're seeing is we're seeing a Kentucky State offense and sideline into this game. Confidence. They're moving the ball. They're being more physical they're really now just letting it all hang out and really robert morris's defense is on their heels right now just hoping that something happens this drive has covered 70 yards thus far as kentucky state has the ball at the robert morris 26 yard line and meyer's going to keep it himself this time and he's met near the line of scrimmage by john huggins but Myers able to lean his way forward and pick up a couple of yards, maybe three, inside of the 25 to the 23-yard line. And Jalen Myers, another transfer from Garden Webb, 6'3", 200-pound junior. I mean, that's a big, you know, running back right there when you do the triple option, and he's able to hit at the line of scrimmage and just fall forward enough for they're getting they're saying two, but it's almost like a good, you know, long two, maybe three yards he picked up right there. But you can see Adam, this Kentucky State offense getting a lot of confidence. Line to gain is the twenty six yard line. The ball right now inside of the twenty four at the twenty three as Meyer steps under center, sends a motion man from right to left. Handoff's gonna go to the fullback and the ball carriers real fields is brought down at the line of scrimmage by Tupuola. And one of the Colonials <laughs> defensive linemen lost the lid. And it looks like it's Tupuola who actually lost his helmet, so he's going to have to come out, and Solorin going to have to come in. And that'll bring up third down. And six with the ball at the 22-yard line. The line to gain is the 16. Kentucky State with the momentum right now, driving this ball from their own six to the Robert Morris 22. Myers under center, sends the wingman in motion. The handoff will go up the middle. Myers pulls the ball out of the belly of the fullback, but the Colonials anticipated that well, and Solorin, who came off of the bench right to the line of scrimmage, makes the stop after a gain of just one, brings up fourth and five, and it's decision time for Kentucky State head coach Charlie Jackson. Yeah, I'm not sure what the kicking situation is, but it looks like he's going to keep the offense out there. Why not? You've, you've had such a long drive right now. Reward the offense. Wouldn't be surprised here. Myers gets the ball on the edge. Do a sort of a run, uh, a pass run option for him. Ball's in the middle of the field. I'd roll him out to the right, try to get him out from outside of that containment and let him pick up the first down with his legs. Fourth and five at the 21 for the Thoroughbreds. Wings to either side, one back set. White, right wing motions. Now they're going to run the pitch to the near side right. Brendan Lawler drives his way inside of the 15 to the 14-yard line, and that's enough for a first down for Kentucky State as they ran the true option there, and it worked to perfection enough for a thoroughbred's first down that continues this drive. Boy, what a gutsy play right there. Going to the right-hand side, triple option to the right. Great job by Myers, but even more impressive job by the wide receivers and the H-back to the right-hand side. Doing great job I just trying to do cut blocks, disrupting the Colonials pressure right there and pursuit first down Kentucky State. Ball carrier up the middle this time is Sylvie and Sylvie driving his way forward inside of the 10 to around the six yard line. A pickup of 
seven before Buzz makes the tackle and Anella Bazanka with the tackle and it's second down Ian three is right now Kentucky State hurrying things up and again it's Sylvie the ball carrier running to his left hand side inside of the five he should have enough for the first down before he's driven back and down yeah 20 seconds left right now before halftime they were just hurry up trying to get the first down um, looks like someone's going to call a timeout yeah, Kentucky State, they got the first down, and then I think they took the timeout, and if they didn't get the first down, it's pretty darn close. So 19 seconds to play here in the second quarter, <laughs> and you have to remember, this drive started way back at the six-yard line, and Kentucky State has slowly but surely moved the ball all the way inside of the Colonials' five to the four-yard line. Very impressive drive, and there was no help by the Colonials' defense. What I mean by that, no bad penalties that pushed the ball forward for them or third down and they didn't convert in a colonial mistake for pass interference they've done it by running the ball timely passes and just being more physical hats off to the kentucky state offense that sort of find themselves robert morse defense right now you got 19 seconds left and you don't want to go into the second half tied 7-7 seven, seven. you know, right now a 90 yard drive for kentucky state in which they were able to convert on a fourth down and five near the 20 yard line Right now, the Robert Morris defense looking to make the stop on first and goal with 19 seconds to play. Thoroughbreds are out of timeouts here, so they may be able to get two plays off in this circumstance as Myers will step under center with wings to either side. Right wing motions. Myers running to his right hand side. He feels the pressure. He throws it into the end zone for a touchdown as Brett Sylvie sagged behind mm. the Colonials rushers, and it's a one point game. And you talked about in pregame what Myers can do getting outside of that pocket, and that's what he did. He rolled to the right, rolled to the right, allowed that pursuit to come, and someone left the wide uh, running back open as he was able to sneak behind the Colonials defense. Easy float right there now. Kentucky State looking to tie this game up 7-7. An incredibly long drive on the clock. Capping off 94 yards in total on the touchdown pass covering four yards from Myers to Sylvie and the PAT is on the way. And that kick is up and no good. Mm -hmm. Wide to the left hand side and Robert Morris at least will keep the lead for the moment, a one-point advantage, 7-6. to six. And now we see why they went for it on fourth down. Kicking game, it could be an issue for Kentucky State, but they'll take that going 90-plus yards on that drive right there, and, boy, what an answer by this Kentucky State team. And, boy, did Kentucky State ever take advantage of a Robert Morris miscue. A trap play down on the four-yard line, and the left guard bumped into the quarterback, Caleb Lewis, and Lewis lost the football in the process. It was dove upon by Xavier Johnson, the defensive back, at the six-yard line. And Kentucky State just chewed up the clock, kept the ball on the ground for the most part, and drove the ball 94 yards for a TD, capped off by that a uh, four-yard touchdown pass from Jalen Myers to Brett Silby. And what, we could be looking at a different game right now. Robert Morris can be up 14-0. Kentucky State might feel a little bit of pressure to make sure that they, uh, to change up their offense and put the ball in the air a little bit more. And I'll credit them. They were able to take advantage of a miscue by the Colonials and actually ride that offense all the way down here. Now Kentucky State can just kick this ball off, go into half, feeling great that they're coming up to their first game of the year against a bigger opponent at a higher level and only being down one point. And you know what compounds the issue is the fact that the Thoroughbreds will get the ball to begin the second half. And expect the same thing right here where they'll, they'll ride the fullback and the athletic ability of Myers, their quarterback, their junior transfer. And boy, this defense as well, if they can make some adjustments on defense on the Kentucky State side, I think that they can be a good job. It's going to be interesting to see in the second half who comes out for the for the quarterback for the Colonials. Is it going to be Martin who they're pulled earlier in the game or if it's going to be Lewis? Maharea Kayal to kick it off for Kentucky State. And he gets underneath this one. End over end kick will carry inside of the 10 to the round the seven yard line where Delano Madison will be on the return for Robert Morris. Finds a crease across the 25, lost the football. It's kicked around and there's a pile up for the football. And we'll see who has it at the bottom of that mass of humanity. But Madison, who carried it out across the 30, just had it punched free. And it looks like RMU at the bottom of the pile. Jannar Walker has it for Robert Morris. 
and see what happens when you put number 63 on a kicker? He <laughs> makes plays, and that's exactly what he did. He came down, wasn't pretty. He put his head right on the football. Madison looked like he was going to have a big return right there, and credit the kicker, came down, put his head right on that ball. That ball came skirting out up in the air. Thankfully for Robert Morris, they get the ball back with one second. Looks like they'll just do victory and call it a first half. How about that drive by Kentucky State? I was just handed the wow. official numbers on it. 20 plays, 94 yards, 11 minutes and 28 seconds. Capped off on the uh, four-yard touchdown pass from Myers to Sylvie. And Robert Morris takes the knee, and that's the final play of the first half. And the Colonials head to the locker room up by just one point after a missed PAT. But Kentucky State ate up virtually the entire second quarter after recovering a fumble and they head into the locker room with a good bit of confidence. Absolutely, good bit of confidence, and I'm sure Coach Clark is not happy with his performance. Robert Morris went three and out in their first series, and after that, they were able to get the ball, go right down the field. Terrence Stevens able to get Colonials on the scoreboard first, up 7 nothing. but after that, it's been struggle after struggle for this Colonials offense, and then you saw the Colonials defense just running out of gas on that long drive. Kentucky stayed able to flex their muscles a little bit, 7-6 at the half. Well, it's halftime, and it's time to transition into the People's Gas Halftime Show. We're going to step away for two minutes, and when we return, we'll be joined by RMU golf coach Jerry Stone right here on ESPN Pittsburgh and the iHeartRadio app keyword, RMU. Remember to tag your posts with the hashtag Colonial Pride. Go Colonials! Be able to do that here. That's very impressive, and I'm sure the staff is very ecstatic with the potential they're seeing from their team this season. Brett Sylvie back to return the kick for Kentucky State, kicking off for Robert Morris is Mike Benson, the 6'3 sophomore. Light winds here on a cloudy day in Moon Township, Pennsylvania. Robert Morris in the road blue or the home blues, and the road whites for the thoroughbreds as Benson's kick will carry to the near corner and bounce out of bounds right at the two-yard line. So this will be great field position for the Kentucky State Thoroughbreds as momentum continues to be on the far sideline. Yeah, just that little momentum like you said. Now they're going to start with ideal field position. They're going to get the ball in a great place. And now Colonial's defense coming out there. Can they make the adjustments? Can they get off the field, keep those starters out there because we saw a lot of different faces out there just because they started getting winded so you're trying to keep fresh players out there to contain this option attack thoroughbreds go straight from the sideline to the line of scrimmage as the ball will be set at the 35 yard line on the left hash for kentucky state colonials stick with the three four Defensive front. Wings to either side for the thoroughbreds. One back set behind the quarterback Myers is Sylvie. Myers under center. Motion man from left to right. Myers is going to run the option to the far side left. He'll pitch it off, and the motion man coming from right to left took the pitch. That was receiver Isaac Fields, who's forced out of bounds by safety Jacob White. Gain of about three on that play brings up second down and seven. And that's so was deceiving about the triple option. You look like you hold the fullback to nothing, but the quarterback pulls the ball. He runs out there. It looks like everybody has the quarterback. Then he pitches the ball. And out front of that pitch man is like a lead blocker who's just throwing what we call throw six, trying to cut that guy down to give him that extra room. They were able to pick up a good three yards on that first play. Wings to either side as Myers steps under center again. Motion man from left to right as Myers runs to the near side right. He pitches it off to the tailback. Lawler, who's met right near the line of scrimmage and brought down to by Anello Bazzacco and Buzz on the stop. Short gain on the play brings up third and six. Yeah, good job by Buzz right there. He's able to sidestep that cut attempt and able to corral the running back only for about a one-yard gain. Now third and six Colonials. This is where they struggled, you know, in that long drive. It would be third and mid like this, and the quarterback would get outside the pocket. Colonials will go man-to-man, and they're able to pick up the first down by a timely pass or the quarterback running. Colonials going to have to do a better job, better on Quarterback pressure and also making sure that they break up these pass attempts. Myers to step under center again with wings to either side. One received to the near side right, one to the far side left. Myers rolling to his left-hand side. He's going to throw this time. 
trying to settle his feet. He'll heave ho it down the field, and the pass to the far sideline is incomplete. He's looking for Powell on the coverage for the Colonials. Taven Harville, and the incomplete pass brings up fourth down and a half dozen. Yeah, Powell had that great pass right there. Myers rolling to his left, throwing across his body a little bit to a deep corner pattern. Powell do a little bit of separation with that offhand. But he had that ball, almost an outstanding catch, but the Colonials will take it. Going three and out, and now the Colonials offense looking to get back out there and reestablish themselves. It'll be interesting to see who comes out for the Colonials at quarterback. And that third medium stop uh, goes a long way to regain the confidence for the Colonials defense after we saw the Thoroughbreds do that so many times, pick up that third uh, down as the punter drops the snap. He was able to get it to bounce back into his chest and boot it away, and the Punt falls into the chest of Vecchio, who's hit immediately by Xavier Johnson, the defensive back who has uh, made the biggest play of the game thus far for Kentucky State on that fumble recovery that led to the long touchdown. Yeah, and actually Scott. great job by him timing that perfectly to hit Vecchio. It looks like Martin's going to come in back at quarterback, and Jackson is going to spell um, Stevens at running back. So it looks like they might try to switch it up a little bit, use a little bit more speed and spread everybody out. And let's see how Martin adjusts after struggling in that first quarter. Martin sends two receivers to the far side right, two to the near side left. One is a wing. As it's power pistol, Martin hands off. Jackson slides through a tackle, cuts to his right-hand side. He'll cross the 20, trying to spin his way out towards the 25 before he's hauled down by a mass of humanity. Chris Roberts included in the tackle, the 320-pound grad student. Pick up of three on that play from the 20 out to the 23, and that brings up second down and seven. As a thoroughbred shaken up, Jeremiah Owens trots to the far sideline under his own power, but a little hitch in his giddy up. Yeah, Owens, a 6'3", 225-pound true freshman linebacker, came on a blitz, had Jackson in the backfield, but Jackson able to spin away from him, and, you know, Owens, like you said, able to gallop gingerly off on his own power. Now Colonial set up second and seven. Two receivers right, one wing to the near side left. Martin setting the pistol over his left shoulder is Jackson. High snap, but the handoff to Jackson nonetheless as he'll turn the corner. Far sideline has a crease. He's got the first down and more. Finally forced out of bounds near the 40-yard line. A big pickup for A.J. Jackson as they'll give him the 42 before Xavier Hill makes the stop for the Thoroughbreds. Yeah, good job by Jackson right there. He's able to accelerate around that right edge. Looked like he was about to get nothing, but used that speed, turned down the sideline. Great job by Hill pushing him out. Now the Colonials offense starting to get going a little bit. 19-yard gain on that play for Robert Morris, so it's first and 10 for RMU out near midfield at the 42 at this point. As Martin is going to send two receivers to the near side left, one to the far boundary right, and a wing to the left of the formation as well. Handoff, Jackson running to the near side left, trying to slide his way through tacklers and actually will surge forward out towards the 43-yard line. Looked like he was bottled up right near the line of scrimmage, but kind of reversed his field and dove backwards, landed on his back for a gain of about two yards. Yeah, I mean, he tried to cut back into the middle, and then he dove down low, and I would too if I saw Chris Rogers, 6'3", 320 defensive end coming at me, and he was going high on Jackson, but he's able to get low to the ground, and just like you said, fall forward for a two-yard game. They spot the ball just past the 43-yard line. So it's about second down and eight and a half. As Martin throws the ball to his right-hand side, and he has a face full of Jeremiah Owens as he releases the ball. Owens swats the ball to the turf after returning after an injury, and that incomplete pass brings up third down and about nine. Yeah, Owens comes unblocked right in the face of Martin. He's trying to get rid of that ball quickly, and... Owens does a great job timing it. Jumps up high, hits that ball, and thankfully that ball just landed peacefully on the ground for an incomplete pass. So the ball set on the left hash on third down and nine with 11.29 to play in the third quarter. Robert Morris up by one. Colonial's going to send two receivers to the right of the formation, settling three over there on that right-hand side. It, some confusion, and RMU is forced to burn a timeout, much to the chagrin of the Colonials coaching staff. Yeah, a little bit of miscommunication, I guess, uh, in terms of what was called versus what was actually, what was called from the sideline versus what was called by Martin, and they're looking at exactly the wristband. Well, we called this play, why did you call this play? So a lot of confusion by the Colonials offense so far in this game. Timeout on the field, we'll step away for 30 seconds. It's Robert Morris in Kentucky State on ESPN Pittsburgh and the iHeart Radio app keyword RMU. legacies and indelible memories. We celebrate the good and the gay.
Morris on top of Kentucky State, 7-6. to six. RMU facing a third down and nine at their own 43-yard line. This drive started at their own 20. The big play thus far, a 19-yard run by A.J. Jackson. Twins to either side as Martin in the shotgun. Sidecar to his right-hand side. Good snap as Martin looks to his left the whole way, feels pressure as he tosses the ball to the near boundary. Looking for the H-back Dylan Smith. The pass is incomplete as on the coverage is Jeremiah Owens, who certainly has made his presence felt on this defensive drive. That incomplete pass brings the punt unit on. Yeah, great pressure um, by the Kentucky State defense forcing Martin to not set his feet and shift to the left a little bit. But again, Owens, someone that we've been calling. Uh, you know, we called him first when he got injured, tried to make that play in the backfield, but he came back and has been... Making some plays now. The Colonial is going to have to force the punt. Boy, they got to get this offense going. Yeah, they're struggling a little bit right now. This will be the third pound of punt of the game for Souders, who's averaging just under 42 yards per punt, and this one will eclipse that by a country mile as it sails into the end zone on the fly. So it'll be a gross punt of 57 yards, a net of. 37 as it'll be first and 10 at the 20 for Kentucky State. Now, great job by Sanders. Good job catching the ball, extending it. One, two, and following through on that, just like a golf swing. That's what we said. Like a punter's like a golf swing. You know, as soon as you pick that head up or you try to do too much, and he just did a great job, and that ball just looked like a perfect pass, like a Hail Mary, and just landed, unfortunately, in the end zone. But you know what? He has to be very happy, and so did the special team coaches after seeing that. Yeah, a net punt of uh, 37 <laughs> yards, and it sets them up at the 20-yard uh, line. Not a bad punt by any stretch of the imagination. And that's what's tough. Net of 37, but he probably kicked it over 50 in the 57, air. 57, yeah. yeah. And if you went from where his foot hit it, it's probably closer to 60. Yeah. Hand off up the middle. This time it's Sylvie carrying the ball from the 20 out towards the 25-yard line where the tackle is made. by uh, Michael Aylin, also uh, Buzz on the tackle, Nella Bazzacco. Michael Elaine, defensive end, 6'4", 255-pound freshman, playing defensive end right now for RMU and making the stop in there with Buzz. Myers under center, wings to either side. One back set as Myers is going to run the option, running left, slides through a tackle, Ooh. drives his way out towards the 30 before he's shouldered to the turf, take tackle by Jacob White. And that's enough for a first down on the gain of six. And it's first and 10 for Kentucky State at the 31-yard line. And what looked to be a game in the Colonials' favor right now is up in the air, and the momentum is up in the air as well after Kentucky State had grabbed hold of it firmly. Right now, neither team has seized momentum in the second half. Yeah, I mean, no, uh, outside of that miscue by the Colonials defense and that turnover, which really was unforced, there really has a defense really hasn't set up for either side, and, and offensively, no one has really taken the reins here and dominated, saying this is what we're going to do today. Big stop there as Sylvie takes the ball, runs to his left-hand side. He's dumped down by Havon Price, the senior out of Woodland Hills High School. Yeah, good job by Price. Fullback had nowhere to go up the middle, and he tried to bounce to the outside. That was an easy job by Price. Sure tackler out there, and that came from what was instilled in him at his high school. There was an uh, official's timeout momentarily. Uh, the play clock, or the game clock, had uh, gone off momentarily, and I'm not sure if it was an issue inside of uh, the circuit breaker box down there on the field level or if it was something over in the press box, but it's back on, and that's the good news. You know what you do? You unplug it and you plug it back in. Exactly. It's just like with IT. Did you turn it off, turn it back on? Does it work now? I mean, that's, you know, that's 101 right there. Or did someone pull, you know, that guy from airplane that unplugged everything, everything went off and plugged it back in? Like, who's the jokester? We don't need any delays. Nah. You and I have a bad history of delays with games. And we, we don't want to talk about that Duquesne game. No, that game was like six hours. <laughs> there was 100 points scored in that game. Every kind of weird touchdown you could think of, the power outage, we were having to talk through for about 45 minutes. 
As again, the option, and this time Myers pulls the ball out of the belly of Sylvie and runs nope. to the near side right. He's strung out and finally brought down as he crosses the 40 out to the 42-yard line. Tackle on the play by Mason Gray, but again, a first down for Kentucky State. That play covering about a dozen yards. Yeah, it was actually, you know, great job by Myers going to the inside, bounce to the outside, some missed tackles right there. He's able to use his speed, but I actually thought that Powell got away with a push in the back right there on the sidelines. And, boy, you know, that was a lucky break that they didn't call that on him because that would have negated that big first down. But now they'll take it now midfield or near midfield, I should say, for Kentucky State. This offense continuing what they did in the second quarter. Meyer stepping under center as the sun comes out from behind the clouds for the first time today here in Moon Township, Pennsylvania. Ball carrier up the middle this time is Israel Fields, who was bottled up initially, then hesitated and surged past uh, the first wave of tacklers before he's finally brought down inside of Colonial's territory at the 44-yard line. Down at the bottom of the pile is Garrett Fairman, the linebacker for RMU. And I just want the... I, I just want individuals that are listening to this going, what is wrong with this Colonials team? They're not going to be good again. Stop that. Because here's what's happening. When you play the triple option, it is a very difficult offense to run. And for those that are maybe watching college football, Army was up 14 nothing against number 7 Michigan at Michigan. It's a tough offense to stop, a lot of discipline. And when you don't practice against it every single week, it is tough to adjust in one week. And to even compound that issue, Robert Morris wasn't sure that that's what they were facing going into this game. They had an inkling that the new coaching staff for Kentucky State was going to start to uh, run the option, especially once they were able to get a hold of some of the new players yesterday. But, you know, a walkthrough on Friday certainly doesn't get you prepped for what you assume you're going to see tomorrow. Absolutely. And when, you know, you have a team that is getting a brand-new staff, new transfers in, yeah, you can say, all right, they came from Air Force Citadel, and you could assume they're going to run this offense. There's nothing ever guaranteed. So if you worked all week on a triple option, they come out here in a spread attack, no huddle, uh, you know, it's all for naught. So a very difficult task for this Colonial staff and defense right now. Credit to Kentucky State. They're sticking to their guns, and they're trying to do what they've been coached. On first down, Israel Fields picked up two yards, and on second down, Brendan Lawler took the pitch coming from his left wing around the right-hand side and was shouldered down right near the first down flag. Uh, a flag is down as well as it came from the back judge. And our referee, uh, William McKeever Jr., going to sort this one out. But if it's against Kentucky State, it's going to negate a big game. So that penalty goes against Isaac Fields, the wide receiver, for a block below the waist downfield. And that is going to back Kentucky State up from the first down marker at the uh, 34 yard line back to the 49 so instead of first and 10 at the 34 it's second down and 15. so for those that are listening you're probably wondering oh, well how can number 86 sounds like a wide receiver number get a block uh, you know a personal foul blo block below the waist when you're probably going against wide receiver but if he's peeling off and going for a linebacker and that linebacker's coming sideways you cannot cut at the linebackers inside the box when coming from the outside in so that is an easy penalty to make sure that their players are safe now if it's going straight up that's no problem motion man from right to left is Lawler as straight drop back for Myers he's going to throw it down the middle of the field a jump ball as Havon Price is back there on defense with Ladarian McAllister and the pass falls to the turf incomplete and that brings up third down and 15. You know good job right there by the Colonials playing good coverage Price doing a great job. Bad pass by Myers. Let him sell a little bit. There was no one in the middle of the field right there. But the struggles continue for the Colonials defense, not getting pressure on the quarterback. I know they want to contain Myers, but he can complete these passes. They don't want to get him out there and to put your guys on islands to try to make these tackles. How about that size mis mismatch between McAllister and Havon Price? <laughs> Ladarian McAllister 6'4", while Havon Price listed at 5'8". But Price is so incredibly smart that he'll say hip to hip with him. And when you do that, no matter how tall you are, it is so difficult to get that separation and also to get up when you're going at the highest point, sort of like a uh, rebounder to get the basketball. You can start to see the frustration build with uh, Jalen Myers in his sideline. Finally, the play was shuttled in by the uh, thoroughbred sideline, but it was too late and the delay of game was called. And that backs up Kentucky State even further. And now they face a third down and 20. Yeah, and that's the unfortunate thing here is you got to wait 
for someone to run 20 plus yards to bring you the play instead of hand signals and things like that. So, I mean, it's a vicious, you know, cycle where it has to go from probably up top, down to the sideline, down to a player, into the huddle. Wings to either side again as Myers fakes the pitch, rolls to his right-hand side. He feels some pressure as he steps up. He's hit as he releases the football down the near sideline and pulling oh. in the pass is Jonathan Powell. Somehow he was able to get it away from Havon Price on the jump ball on the near boundary. Jump ball right there. Price had a hand on it. Powell jumped over him just enough. Two hands ripped it away from him. But credit Myers getting pressure right up the middle. Fakes a pitch to his left, rolls to his right, gets pressure right away, steps, throws, gets hit. Unbelievable job by Powell to pull that ball away. Now, first and goal for Kentucky State, looking to take a lead today. Thoroughbreds 10 yards away from their first lead of the affair. It's first and goal right near the 10-yard line as the handoff will go to Brett Sylvie, and he is brought down inside of the five at around the two-yard line before he's brought down end over end by Mason Gray. So second and goal at the one. As Myers hurries things up, steps under center, motion man from right to left, handoff, Sylvie lowers his shoulders, gets to the line of scrimmage, but no further before he's driven back by a host of blue jerseys. And it's interesting, they go quick, and they reverse out and give it to the fullback again, the exact same play. And you know what? You have Meyer, 6'3", 200 pounds. You just do a quarterback sneak right there. That catch everybody off guard. Let that big quarterback who has some strength, some power in those legs, try to muscle it in. But now third and what? A long one, a very long one to get this, you know, into the end zone. Just under five minutes to play third quarter. Myers steps under center on third and goal at the one. One back behind him, motion man from right to left again, handoff this time into the end zone goes Israel Fields for the touchdown for Kentucky State. Looks like the Colonials had come out of there with the football, but not before Fields had crossed the goal line, and Robert Morris is down 12-7 as another long, protracted touchdown drive for Kentucky State. And you can see, you talked about it, Adam. You mentioned it about momentum, who's going to get it now. You could sort of see it shift that confidence coming back into this offense and that doubt into this Colonials defense. Not saying they're hanging their head, but it's like, oh, here we're out on the field again. We're, these long drives are really taking their toll. This Colonials offense has to step forward, flex their muscles a little bit, and take over this game. Yeah, this is a circumstance where the Robert Morris offense can't you know, lay an egg. They need to come out. They need to put some points on the board down by six after the PAT is up and in. 4.47 to play third quarter. Kentucky State has claimed the lead 13-7 on your Robert Morris Colonials. It's Robert Morris football on ESPN Pittsburgh and the iHeartRadio app keyword RMU. Remember to tag your posts with the hashtag Colonial Pride. Go Colonial. Four forty-seven to play in the third quarter. Robert Morris trailing Kentucky State thirteen to seven here on ESPN Pittsburgh in the iHeart Radio app. Adam Gusky sitting in for Chris Shovlin alongside of Brian Cleary. And uh, you know, Brian, we this is really, really got to be frustrating for the Colonials' defensive unit as well as their staff to see Kentucky State go on two protracted, long-lasting touchdown drives. This one, 12 plays, 80 yards, 6 minutes and 29 seconds. Yeah, and we talked about the maturity of this team heading into this game, being up so high and excited to play against Buffalo, and then all of a sudden to play a team that was 0-10 last year in Kentucky State and now losing 13-7. Time for this offense to take a step forward, and who's going to step up for this team? You're going to ride this offensive line when you've had two quarterbacks in who have struggled so far today and let your running backs run it down the field for you. Chaos kick returned by A.J. Jackson. He's wrapped and brought down at the 23-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for Robert Morris, 77 yards away from an opportunity to reclaim the lead. Two touchdown drives today for Kentucky State. Uh, occupying 32 total plays and 174 total yards. Add to that the fact that it uh, took up uh, nearly 18 minutes of football. And that's just two touchdown drives. Yeah. Whistles blow before the first snap of this possession, and Robert Morris is mm. forced to use a timeout. 
And that'll give us an opportunity to take a breather as well. 13-7, to 7, your score back in 30 seconds. It's Robert Morris Football on ESPN Pittsburgh and the iHeartRadio app. Keyword, RMU. It's down by a half dozen, 13-7 to 7, with 4.38 to play in the third quarter. Colonials facing first and 10, ball on the right hash at their own 23, looking to answer after Kentucky State went on another long touchdown drive, 12 plays, 80 yards, occupying 629. It was capped off on a one-yard touchdown run. George Martin, first play, dropping back, setting up the screen, finding A.J. Jackson, who tries to spin past a tackler, slides his way forward out towards the 30-yard line before the tackle is made by Cal Morris Robinson. Yeah, nice, easy, safe play right there for Martin. Get your offensive line out in front of Jackson. Easy screen pass to the right. Fake it to the left. Let Jackson slip out there. Good patience by Martin. Dump it. Easy completion. Hopefully get a couple of plays like that, get Martin back into this game and let get this offense going because right now the Colonials are playing from behind. So a big screen pass on the Colonials' lone touchdown drive from Martin to Jackson with similar results. Now second and three. For Robert Morris, the ball in the right hash at the 30-yard line as Martin's going to pull the ball out of the belly of Jackson. Looks across the middle, finds White, and White is brought down out across the 40 to the 43-yard line, and the Colonials go to the air on two consecutive plays, and they get a first down out of it on that pass to Deontay White. No good play action right there. That actually froze the linebackers, but as soon as they saw pass, they scrambled to get into their little zone right there, and great job by White cutting through. And good pass by Martin right there. Setting his feet, feeling the pressure a little bit, delivering a good pass by White. He makes a tough catch in traffic. Now the Colonials offense, two good back-to-back plays. Two receivers left, a wing and a receiver to the far side right. Offset pistol behind Martin. Some movement before the snap, and I think the Colonials' right guard may have moved prior to the snap, and I'm not sure if he was drawn by some movement by a blitzing linebacker, but the officials are going to say false start instead. So that costs Robert Morris five yards. Yeah, I know what they try to do. You know, when a defense flitch, if they make you jump, it's a penalty on them. But, you know, I, defense is allowed to flitch. They're allowed to pick up their hand once they put it down. Offensively, you should be taught if you put your hand down, don't pick it up until the ball is snapped. And that's, unfortunately, Robert Morris got, you know, caught with that. Now instead of first and 10, you're looking at first and 15, which changes your play calling right away on first down. And it moves the ball from the 44 back to the 39-yard line on this first and 15. And the handoff. No, Jackson's going to have the ball pulled out of his belly by Martin, who runs to his left. He's got the first down and more inside of Thoroughbred's territory and finally spun down at the 41-yard line. And a tackle downfield by Andrew Perkins. George Martin, the QB, showing the wheels. Yeah, good job right there. Good job pulling it out there. Owens, that linebacker we were talking about, was coming to hit Jackson from behind. And no one expected Martin to pick up that ball. And he was able to pick it up and scramble very gingerly to the left-hand side to pick up that first down. Now they're in Kentucky State territory. Clock winds. Two and a half minutes to play here in the third quarter. Robert Morris down a half dozen. Two receivers split to either side as Martin in the pistol with Jackson over his left shoulder. Jackson's going to take the handoff. No. Again, Martin pulls it out of his belly. Runs to his left. Slides his way forward. Down towards the 30-yard line. It'll be a pickup of nine before the tackle is finally made by one of the D-backs, Andrew Perkins, the safety for the Kentucky State Thoroughbreds. You know, back-to-back plays right there where they're faking the ball to Jackson. Actually, just reading it, sort of like an option play. Either you're going to give it to Jackson or it's a quarterback keeper. Back-to-back plays where Martin's quarterback keeper. Now, look actually for pressure from Kentucky State to bring some more pressure into the open side. What I mean by that, where the running back is away from uh, Martin. Look for them to bring backside pressure. Second down and two as Jackson takes the handoff this time, and he has the first down and more, taking it inside of the 30 to the 29-yard line before he's finally tossed back by Chris Roberts, the defensive tackle. Now, good job by Chris Roberts. He actually wanted to do a, a belly-to-back suplex right there on him, but you know, thankfully he was unable to. But Jackson able to get enough to move the chains to get a first down. Clock winding under 90 seconds to play here in the third quarter. The Colonials driving the ball. Back near their own 20 is where this drive started, actually at the 23 after the return by Jackson, who has carried the load from the running back spot. We've seen Martin 
power of this drive with his legs as well. Now he goes to the air, throwing the football, and he was looking to his left-hand side, and the pass intended for Jerry Hanks Jr. is incomplete as it's broken up by one of the linebackers underneath. Yeah, Martin doing play-action pass looking left the whole time, and when he sees films like that, he's not going to like what he sees because the slot man, Walker, on the right-hand side, nobody had him. He's going down the middle of the field wide open. He could have floated that ball. Heck, he could have threw it left-handed to him for a touchdown. And unfortunately, if that was a design play where they're looking that way the entire time, you know, that's fine. But sometimes when he's double, triple coverage, you got to look away, go through your progressions. Stevens now the tail back to the right-hand side of Martin, who sends twins to either side. Martin takes the shotgun snap, dumps it off on the screen pass. Stevens dives over a thoroughbred and is undercut at the 20-yard line. That's more than enough for the first down at that 20. Actually, they'll say just shy. It looked like he had uh, dove inside of the 20 to the 19, but they will say he's down at the 20 where it's third down and a very manageable one. Yeah, he tried to do a sidestep right there, and unfortunately, I think someone just clipped his feet just enough where he couldn't land squarely back underneath himself, and he just slipped right to the ground. Now, Colonial's third in short, big down right here for them. Offset eye backfield, handoff Stevens. He'll drag a defensive tackle with him inside of the 19 to the 18-yard line. The tackle made by the 380-pound <laughs> freshman, Ernest Austin. And that is evidence that Terrence Stevens spent some time in the squat rack in the offseason if he was able to carry the 400-pounder on his back for two yards. Yeah, absolutely. And it looks like we're going to wind down to go to the fourth quarter right here, but you're absolutely right right there. Stevens met at the line of scrimmage by a 380-pound defensive tackle, using momentum and strength to push him far enough to get that first down. And that was the final play of the third quarter. We will head to the fourth frame. The Colonials down by six points, 13-7, to seven, but RMU driving inside of the Kentucky State red zone. When we return, it will be the fourth quarter of RMU football on ESPN Pittsburgh and the iHeartRadio app keyword RMU. Go Colonials. Colonials down by six, but have the ball inside of the Thoroughbreds red zone. First and 10 at the 18-yard line. As we are set to start the fourth quarter here in Moon Township, Pennsylvania. Adam Gusky, Brian Clear on the call for you here on ESPN Pittsburgh. Handoff, Stevens has a crease over left tackle. He's got it inside of the 15, inside of the 10. Forced out of bounds near the first down flag before finally getting that final shove by Antoine Lloyd. Yeah, good job right there. You know, Alex Minford pulling to his left. A little bit of a counter play to the short side of the field. Good job, Minford, cl clearing that hole to the left, and then they're able to go up to uh, inside, and then Stevens breaking it to the outside. Now Connor Mundy coming in. It looks like the, um, what we used to call the tough personnel for Coach Walton days, just, you know, predating myself, and it looks like they're going to go short yardage here. Yeah, second down and one with the ball at the nine. Hand off Stevens. He has the first down. Backing his way down inside of the five to the four-yard line. He needed one. He picked up five, and it's first and goal for the Colonials at the four. Colonials speeding things up here is again. Stevens will take the handoff over right tackle, slides through the first wave of tacklers, and is brought down right around the uh, two and a half, maybe the three. It'll depend on... Uh, where the ball is finally placed by the umpire, but Stevens picking up positive yardage on that first and goal. Tackle by uh, Chris Roberts, one of those big 300-pound plusers on the inside of that defensive front. Yeah, that's the problem with Rob Morris. They're going to bring in Connor Mundy in as their tough personnel, 6'3", 280 senior, played a little bit of everything for his Colonials career, and they're going to line him up as an offensive lineman, an extra one, but, you know, when you have 380, you know, 320 and 300 in there, that's tough to move. Wing right, receiver left, handoff. Stevens running to the left, has a blocker in front of him, but he's tripped up from behind. And an ankle tackle keeps that play at no gain, and that brings up third and goal at the three. Yeah, they're just submarining these big defensive tackles because they know the Colonials are trying to attack in between the tackles. And they're just diving at their feet so the Colonials can't get any movement right there. And what's happening is guys are just reaching in and tripped up Stevens right there. Now a huge third and three for this Colonials offense. A.J. Jackson in, Stevens to the sideline on third down and goal at the three-yard line with 13 minutes to play in regulation. Robert Moore is down by six. Ball's on the left hash as Martin to the shotgun to receiver's right. Now Jordan Johnson settles to the right-hand side. Martin rolls right. 
tosses it off, and it's caught by Jordan Johnson at the one-yard line, and he went backwards into the end zone. It'll be uh, down to the one-yard line, and a flag comes in late as well. And the referee threw that flag. And we'll have to sort this one out, but uh, my eyes had went away from where the flag was yeah. thrown. It could have been roughing the passer. So it's an automatic first down. So after the completed pass to Jordan Johnson at the one-yard line, the ball will be moved from the one to the half-yard line, and the Colonials will have four opportunities to try to punch it in from there. Yeah, I mean, good break by the Colonials right there because they were looking at, if there was no penalty, a fourth and short at the one because, again, ball throwing down at the feet, running back got it, and he fell short of the end zone. Offset eye, Johnson takes the handoff. He's met at the line of scrimmage and shoved Ooh. back. They'll say that his forward progress was stalled right as he got to the line of scrimmage. And a great surge on that second wave of tacklers, including Artest Banks. Banks made that first hit, and then he had a wave of players after him doing that. But great job by him coming unblocked, standing up, the running back at the line of scrimmage. Boy, good call, but can they do this now a couple times? It's going to be interesting to see if we get down the third and fourth down, do they keep the ball on the ground or they just get the points? Big package for the Colonials as the handoff goes to Johnson. He lost ball. the football on the way in, and it's covered up by Kentucky State. George Martin and Jordan Johnson couldn't connect on the handoff, and for the second time today, we see the Colonials turn the ball over on a goal situation. Unfortunate, unfortunate. Twice now on the doorstep, the Colonials have turned over the ball. And my question is, where is Terrence Stevens? Where is your thrower, Brad? Your senior leader, six foot, 200 pounds. You've been riding them all game. Why are you taking him out when he should be getting the ball in the end zone for you to put this team ahead? And I can understand maybe at the end of the series prior to the penalty, he came out, he was winded. But in that circumstance, once he catches his breath, I think he needs to be back in there in that football game. Absolutely. This is not, you know, participation trophy time for the Colonials. I understand personnel, everybody has a job to do, and they can all do it very well. But you have a senior that's highlighted by local media that's right down the road that you want to help change this culture. Ride him into the end zone. But now the Colonials defense in a very similar situation in the second quarter here, Adam. Let's see if they can stop this offense that's been rolling a little bit. For the thoroughbreds. First and 10 at the two for Kentucky State. And the first play goes to Brett Sylvie, who drives his way out across the 10 before he's undercut towards the 11 yard line. But there is a flag down, and it's right at the line of scrimmage. Had it been in the end zone and it was holding against Kentucky State, it would have been a safety. Instead, it'll just back them up halfway to the goal line if this is, in fact, a hold against the thoroughbreds. And it is against Kentucky State, their offensive lineman. Eliezer Hernandez, the 6'4", 320-pound junior. So that backs the thoroughbreds up to the one-yard line where it'll be first down and 11. Again, Kentucky State in the second quarter, one on a 20-play, 94-yard drive after the Colonials turned it over on first and goal at the six. Robert Morris had it. Second and goal at the one, handed off to Jordan Johnson. He fumbled the ball. It was covered up by Kentucky State, and that's how they have it here in the fourth quarter. All right, deja vu. Are we going to see it all over again? But thankfully, Robert Morris on that first play gets a holding call, or it would have been almost a 10-yard gain out of the gate. Handoff again goes to Sylvie, and he is wrapped at the line of scrimmage by uh, Ezra Tupola, and uh, Tupola makes the tackle. Gain of about three on the play brings up Second down and eight from the four-yard line. Tuola, six feet, 308-pound sophomore on the inside of that defensive line. Clock winding, under 11 minutes to play in regulation. Robert Morris down by six as Kentucky State has gone on two very long clock-eating drives. And the thoroughbreds are forced to call a timeout as the uh, play clock was winding down and they weren't going to have an opportunity to get the snap off. So 10.40 to play in the fourth quarter. Robert Morris down 13-7. to seven. It's Robert Morris football on ESPN Pittsburgh in the iHeartRadio app. Keyword, RMU. That was weird. No management. 
Start your game day with the new hash brown scramble bowl from Chick-fil-A. Eight the ball at their own four yard line after they got the ball at their own one after a fumble by Jordan Johnson. The second turnover by Robert Morris today and more uh, devastatingly, the second turnover for the Colonials inside of the Thoroughbreds 10. One at the six that uh, the Thoroughbreds turned into a 94 yard touchdown drive and this one at the one which Kentucky State faces a second down and eight at their own four. And honestly, no matter how Kentucky State moves the ball, if they get first downs and they chew up the clock, I'd be surprised if they take any chances and put it up in the air unless it's going to Powell. You know, they're, they're just going to throw it up to Powell and let him try to make a play because of how tall he is over these DBs. But don't be surprised. They just keep throwing the ball, eat the clock, because Colonials with only one timeout left, and they're playing from behind. Myers under center. And he's going to run to his right-hand side, strung to that far sideline where he's brought down from behind by Brady Hours. Havon Price had the responsibility of keeping the tail back, so there was no pitch there. And Hours makes the stop at the seven-yard line, bringing up third down and five. You know, great job by Price right there reading that. Myers, as soon as he made that option fake to the fullback, he just tucked that ball and started accelerating to the sideline like a running back. So Price saw that, came in, made that sure tackle right there now. Third and five right now. This is where Myers is a little bit dangerous, where he can tuck the ball up and outmaneuver the linebackers between the tackles and pick up the first down, or they try to get him to the sideline. So it's going to be vital for the Colonials to make sure they keep him in check. Third and five for Kentucky State. One receiver to the near side left as Myers is going to keep it himself, running to his right-hand side. He's wrapped by Tupuola, mm. and it's right near that first down flag. He may have enough. The officials are... Yep. Calling for the clock to stop, and it is enough for the first down before Tupuola made the tackle. You know, it's funny. It's it, a, a lot of this. We saw this last week, Adam, and I, we're seeing it extremely aggressive this week. It's as soon as they're near where they think the first down is, they're just waving them on. Remember back in the day when we played, it's always we could always, as a player, ask them, "Hey, you gonna measure that?" And they would call a timeout and bring it in. But now they don't even measure it. It's just, "Hey, give that old thumb one eye look." All right, it's first down. Let's go. So it's first and 10, it's a 12. As Myers steps under center, and he will hand off. This time it's the tailback. Um, Israel Fields, who's brought down by Anello Bazzacco. Fields, who has a touchdown on the day. Brought down for a gain of a yard. Brings up second down and nine. Now, Buzz having a great game. You know, had six tackles in the first half. Adam, and then now we've been calling his name quite a few times here in the second half. Wouldn't be surprised if the first year started really making his way to the first double digit tackle as a colonial. Yeah, he, Tupola, and Jacob White all approaching double figures in the tackling category today. 8.41 to play as the clock winds here in the fourth quarter. Robert Morris down by six. The ball in the middle of the field as Kentucky State steps under center on second down and nine. Meyer's going to run the option to the right-hand side. Pitches it off to that far boundary and the uh, tailback chucked to the far corner. Tackle made by Jacob White. Not a big gain there for Tyler Telfey coming from the wing on the left-hand side. A pickup of just about two brings up third down and seven. Now a good job by the Colonials defense stretching that out, even forcing him to pitch, and that pitch actually almost went right out of bounds. Now the Colonials able to stop the clock. Eight minutes, 11 seconds left now. Third and six for Kentucky State. But they've been in situations like this before, and without actually putting the ball in the air, they've been able to pick it up behind the legs of Myers, their quarterback. And Myers will step under center. With receivers split to either side and wings to either side, one back behind him. Myers feigns the pitch, runs to his right-hand side, lowers his shoulders as he's hit. He thought about pitching the ball on his way down, but smartly held on to it, and the Colonials make the stop there. Uh, several Colonial defenders on the stop, including eyes on Pulley. Well, now it's decision time, which I think it's an easy decision. you got to punt the ball and realize that Robert Morris's offense, you know, should get the ball right around midfield, but, you know, again, is the pressure going to be on the Colonials offense to try to get something rather quickly? But, you know, Kentucky State's going to take their time. they got timeouts to burn. Don't be surprised if they're just going to chew it all the way up until the end of the play clock. Yeah, they do run the punt unit on with about 10 seconds to go, and that forces Robert Morris to race their punt return unit on. A.J. Jackson will be re return man for Robert Morris as Michael Bobak will be the punter for Kentucky State. And that clock is down to zero for a good three or four seconds before the referee sees that the back judge had thrown the flag for delay of game. 
So Kentucky State pushed back five yards, and they're going to have to punt from their own eight now. Or check that from their own 13. The ball was moved from the 18 to the 13. So while Robert Morris gave the ball up at the one, Kentucky State not able to do much with it. And they are asking for the game clock to be reset to 6.58 from 6.54, so four more seconds for the RMU offense to work with here, down by a half dozen as they'll get the ball here in the fourth quarter. Punt by Bobak, spiraling punt, Jackson retreating, catching it as he backpedals around the 40-yard line, slides through tacklers, finds a second wave of tacklers to try to wiggle his way through, and he's finally brought down at the 48-yard line, so the Colonial's going to start a drive inside of Thoroughbred's territory, and a flag is down way back near the line of scrimmage after Antoine Lloyd made the tackle. It's going to be interesting to see what the call is right here. Sometimes when it's right there where the center was, you can't touch him. And I'm just nervous that, that someone blasts the center as soon as he snapped the ball. Oh. First down. Yep. So prior to the kick, that's the key in that particular penalty. Wow. That a colonial, Stephen Sutton, the reserve running back, held a Kentucky State gunner. And in the process gives Kentucky State a first down. So Thoroughbreds had it fourth and nine. Now it's going to be first and ten out across the 20 near the 24. Yeah, so what what those gunners are, they're wind up li lined up wide like a wide receiver, but we call them gunners because they just their job is just to fly down as fast as they can like a bullet. They have one job to get down to the punt return as fast as they can. And if he's jamming him and holding him blatantly before the ball is physically kicked, that is what they called and it's an automatic first down based on it was fourth and nine. An unfortunate break for the Colonial special teams, but now this defense, with the clock against them now, 6.46 left, they're going to have to do something to stop this offense, which they did last time. They're going to have to do it again. Again, double wings and a receiver to the right as Meyer steps under center. The wing from the left motions to the right. The handoff goes to Sylvie, who drives his way across the 25 to the 26-yard line before he's brought down by Jared Harris, the Colonials' defensive end. And Kentucky State will be more than happy to uh, eat up some clock here. Hmm. And Ezra Tupola is shaken up in the process, down then back up to his feet. And now being tended to by athletic trainer Mike Vitorino. Next week, Robert Moore is taking on the Dayton Flyers. Three o'clock kickoff. It's homecoming here in Moon Township. In our coverage right here on ESPN Pittsburgh, we'll start at 2.30 p.m. Also, come on out to the All-Star Sports Bar and Grill this upcoming Thursday night as it'll be our weekly installment of the Bernard Clark Jr. Show right here on ESPN Pittsburgh. So if you can't come out and join us in person, tune in here on ESPN Pittsburgh and the iHeartRadio app as Tupuola continues to saunter his way to the near sideline under his own power. And the clock will wind again after Tupola helped to the near boundary. Thoroughbred said one receiver to the near side left. Wings to either side, one back set behind Myers. And Jalen Myers eating up a lot of time here. He knows he has 15 to work with on the play clock to go along with his six minutes on a winding clock on the game clock. Myers hands off. Sylvie again, the ball carrier, hesitates, then bursts free to the right-hand side, out across the 30 to the 31, maybe the 32-yard line. A little extracurriculars over on that far sideline as Anello Bazzacco was driven to that far side by one of the defensive uh, linemen, or one of the offensive linemen. And Anthony Geeter 
There's the O lineman I'm talking about that just tossed the Colonials linebacker to the far boundary. Yeah, just stayed on his man, and we always talk about it as an offensive lineman that you block to the whistle, 10 yards back or on their back, learned that from the great bad rad, Dan Redikovich, who was here at the creation of the football program. And, boy, he did exactly that, finished that Colonial defender out of bounds. Third and one. Myers, the ball carrier, met in the backfield, but able to surge his way forward and close to the first down. Flag line judge is going to mark him just shy of that first down marker. Two different marks right now. One guy short, closest to the Colonial sidelines. The other guy to the closer to Kentucky State has him almost to the first down. This is the time where they need to measure. They're going to say fourth down. All right. So I'm Kentucky State right now. 4:38 left everything on the line i'm just going for it yeah it's fourth down and short the ball shy of the 33 yard line clock winding four and a half minutes to play kentucky state on top of robert morris 13 to 7. seems like what they're going to do is wind the clock down 12 seconds left on the play clock get around four minutes call one of your two timeouts remaining talk about it as a staff and make the right decision And that's exactly what they do. They take the timeout with one second on the play clock, 4.06 on the game clock. Robert Morris down by a half a dozen. Some things have not gone the Colonials' way today. Turnovers and penalties at costly times have hurt the Colonials. We'll step away for 30 seconds. Robert Morris trailing Kentucky State 13-7. Kentucky State has eaten up a good bit of clock after the Colonials fumbled the ball inside of the five-yard line, and Kentucky State covered it up right around the one. Uh, the Thoroughbreds now have the ball fourth down and one near the 32. The line to gain is the 33 as Myers steps under center. Myers going to go with the hard count here. Three seconds on the play clock, and Myers comes out and uses the final timeout that Kentucky State has. And great discipline there by the Colonials' defensive front not to surge forward, trying to anticipate the snap count. Yeah, because Kentucky State had film on Robert Morris against Buffalo, and Robert Morris was guilty of that, almost like on three straight defensive plays where they were trying to, you know, time that perfectly, and Robert Moore is doing great discipline right there. Now it looks like Kentucky State's going to come out here, punt, and rely on their defense to try to win this game for them. Well, the chess match in this particular circumstance works in Kentucky's favor as they were able to kill some clock, and now if they do bring the punt unit on and Robert Morris is able to score and Kentucky State gets the ball back, they don't have any timeouts to work with. Yeah, and for an option team with no timeouts left and... You know, that's going to be very difficult. You know, Robert Morris sort of not checkmate yet, but because they still got a score. But right. it looks like they're going to get the ball back. No, they're not. They're going to go for it on fourth down now because they did a trickery where they looked like they ran out the punter first before the offense, and then he peeled back and ran and let the offense come back out there. So Myers is going to step under center here with wings to either side. Motion man from left to right, hand off Sylvie. He's got the first down. He's still on his feet out across the 40, out towards the 42-yard line before he's finally brought down. And it'll be first and 10 for uh, the Kentucky State Thoroughbreds at the 42-yard line after John Huggins makes the tackle for Robert Morris. Fourth and one, reverse handout, giving it to the fullback. Didn't get hit until the second level. What I mean by that, he didn't get touched until he got to the position where the linebackers usually stand at. And then once he got hit, he kept those legs turning, spinning, diving forward. Boy, what a great pickup right there. And unfortunately for the Colonials, it's sort of like a, just a quick dive play, and they just couldn't stop it. You know, they didn't make any adjustments with that 34 personnel, and you start wondering, are these undersized linebackers able to stack up against this option attack to stop this fullback? One receiver to the far side right as Myers is chewing up tons of clock right now. Still has eight on the play clock as he steps under center. And he will hand off. And again, it's Sylvie, the ball carrier, met by eyes on Pulley at the line of scrimmage. And a gain of three brings up uh, second down and seven. And, you know, Brian, you have to think that Robert Morris had the opportunity to take a lead of 13 or 14 to nothing and a fumble by Caleb Lewis. Then they had the opportunity to tie or take the lead uh, when the Colonials were down by 6, 13 to 7, and a fumble by Jordan Johnson. Then the Colonials got the ball back on a 
sky-high punt that was caught by Elijah Jackson at the 48-yard line, but a penalty by Robert Morris negates that opportunity for Robert Morris to try to score again. So three very costly mistakes costing Robert Morris uh, what seems to be an opportunity to win this game as we are down to two and a half minutes to go here, and a team that's been able to run the ball continues to do so. Kentucky State pickup of one brings up third down and six. 2-12 as the clock winds here in the fourth quarter. Ball's on the right hash. Thoroughbreds meticulously doing everything they can to eat up as much clock as possible. They hit the line of scrimmage with seven to go on the play clock. One receiver left, wings to either side. Motion man from right to left, fangs the pitch. Myers runs to his right. He's got a lot of room over there as he's tripped up by Havon Price and had Price not got the ankle Ooh, tackle, know. that could have been a touchdown for Myers. A touchdown or at least, you know, Myers could have easily got the first down and probably just slid and this game would be over. Now the Colonials stop the ball, stop the clock, minute 40 left. That's their last timeout. And then now fourth and a long one at midfield. What does Kentucky State do? Do they put the ball back in the Colonials offense or do they just say, you know what, offense, go win us the game? And I think that you've seen what Charlie Jackson and his staff had a, have a propensity to do. They go for it. They went for it before. They got it. You think they're going to go for it here? I would think so. The ball right now is inside of Robert Morris' territory at the 49 with the line to gain the 48. And just the reaction I just saw from the coaches next to us, and I'm pointing to the Kentucky State coaches to the right because our coaches are under a curtain of secrecy over here to our left. They're celebrating. Why? Because I think their coach just said, we are going for it and we are going for the win. And when you have a coach that does that, the team believes in that, you're building that culture, now the Colonials, actually now on trickery, now they're coming out here and bringing the punt team out here, and here comes the offense. They're trying to be cute, bringing the punt team out here, and then they bring the offense out here. So now it looks like they're going to bring the offense and just try to go for that first down. Well, you'd have to assume Robert Morris anticipated that and was just going to send a return man back, had the punt unit come on, and that's exactly the circumstance. And right now they have to run a player on late. Just 12 seconds to go now in the play clock as Myers brings the thoroughbreds to the line of scrimmage. Myers hands off, and the fullback has the first down. Christopher Conway inside of the 35 at the 34-yard line. It's a first down, and Kentucky State, barring a turnover, is going to win this football game. And Kentucky State right now with a minute 30 left and four downs. They could just take knees, and they are going to get their first victory in almost a year and a half against a larger opponent. We always talk about FCF beating FBS. Now you're talking Division II beating FCS. Robert Morris, very disappointing in their home opener. And actually, Conwell, uh, Conway was actually coming on. They were yelling for him to come on there. You give the ball in a game-winning situation to a six foot two, 235-pound freshman running back who was able to just bowl his way to a first down. Myers takes the snap and takes the knee. And there'll be one more snap, and this football game will be over. Kentucky State makes the drive to suburban Pittsburgh and upsets the Robert Morris Colonials. And while Kentucky State certainly did what they had to do offensively, the Colonials didn't do themselves any favors, turning the ball over twice and committing a tragic penalty in a circumstance where they would have gotten the ball back and an opportunity to reclaim the lead. A disappointing home opener for the Colonials, but let me tell you what Kentucky State did today. They woke up, got on a bus on the game day and drove from Kentucky to Pittsburgh. That's what they did. They did not sleep over it. They drove up here, left early, business trip, got the job done. I have to tip my hat to this team. They took advantage of costly errors by the Colonials, mental mistakes. Boy, they get their first win. Colonials go for 0-2, and, and now a lot of question marks for this team, for the staff, for the players. What do they do to move forward? Because next week's homecoming against a very, very tough Dayton Flyers team. And, you know, you've got to think on both sides of the ball. There's questions because on offense, you turn the ball over and you had some inefficiencies, which led to Caleb Lewis coming in, which led to a fumble. And then you had a circumstance where Terrence uh, Stevens was out of the game and Jordan Johnson came in on a goal line situation and that led to a fumble. And in both of those circumstances, long drives by Kentucky State 
one led to points, one allowed them to just kill the clock over the final 10 minutes. Yeah, and, you know, I, I think there's a level of uncertainty of really who is the quarterback of this team. Uh, Martin did struggle in the first half. Lewis came in. He got hit. It's not like he threw an interception. He got hit. The ball came loose, and he was taken out. Um, the offense, I think, sputtered a little bit. We still don't have a, you know, a wide receiver, Matt Gonzalez, being out. But, you know, you have outstanding talent like Timmy Vecchio. We didn't call his name at all in the first two games, unfortunately. So it, 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 I think this team and this staff have to find themselves right now. And this is going to be a gut check for them, you know, to watch an 0-10 team last year with all these new starters, new coaches, new staff to come on your home field to beat you and to celebrate why you're trying to rally and figure out what's going on. It's going to be a tough field to swallow starting on films on Sunday. Well, we will transition into the UPMC Sports Medicine post-game show in two minutes when we return here on ESPN Pittsburgh and the iHeartRadio app keyword RMU.